Today I'm going to be showing you some 1.21 build hacks, ranging from very useful, like this fence, all the way to the most cursed build hacks ever. And at the end of the video, I'm going to be making a house using only new blocks to show you just how good these build hacks really are. This is chiseled copper, and because of this cool X design on the sides of the block, it actually makes a really nice crate if placed with some other crate looking things. And if you place these blocks in a 2x2 like this, and then place signs all around the sides, you can make an even bigger and better looking yes, crate. Sir. You can also mix in some of the brand new copper trap doors on the side of the crates, and you can even change the middle block to make some empty looking crates. Or we can just remove the block in the middle completely, and we get a cool little animal house. I promise I'm gonna let him out, guys. If you want to make a more humane pet house, you can place some trap doors like this, add some carpets on the bottom, and then put the new heavy core in the front, which kind of looks like a food bowl. And if you want some more food for your pet, you can place a chiseled copper like this, and put a sea pickle on the top, and it kind of looks like a melon or something. We should probably just stick to the actual melon though. I don't know if I cooked with this one. You can place some copper trap doors on top of campfires like this to make a cool looking stove. And now we can cook the melon if we want. And if you want to make a chair to sit down and have a meal, here's one chair design using the new trap doors. And here's another. This chair is a little bit goofy. In real life, it would be like three meters tall. Another new block coming in 1.21 is the crafter, which surprisingly has a lot of different building use. To start, you can make a stove by placing the crafter on top of some campfires, and then adding a few more kitchen details like this. And you can also use a crafter as cabinets if you place it facing this way instead. Who knew the crafter was the ultimate yes, kitchen sir. block? The bottom of the crafter can also be used as a roof, so I guess that makes it the third time it's used in this kitchen. And if you place it on the ground, it kind of looks like some kind of mat that is meant to keep the floor clean. Might as well just build the whole house out of crafters at this point. More household items that can be built with a crafter is, is this PC where the crafter is used as a monitor, or you can go all out and build a flat screen TV using two different angles of the crafter like this. Don't mind me, just sitting on my crafter couch watching my crafter TV. You can also place a crafter like this, and then put a few seats around it to create an actual functioning game of tic-tac-toe. Okay, how am I losing to myself? And if you want to protect your house from intruders, you can use the crafter as a keypad like this. If you place a tough wall with a trap door on each side, and then add a crafter on top, and place a few more details like this, you can make a telephone booth looking thing like this, and if you look at this side of the crafter, it kind of looks like a face, which means you're actually able to build the crafter man like this. Now I know why we installed the security on the first door, this guy's not messing around. Coming up next, we have a few build hacks that are pretty tough. Tough bricks look kind of like stone bricks, so you can mix them together to make a nice looking pattern. Just like how chiseled tough and polished tough go together nicely if you place them on the floor. You can also use the top of chiseled tough bricks to make a really satisfying floor design like this. This is so cool, it almost looks like it's 3D. And if you take the side of regular chiseled tough and place it in a cave, it kind of looks like old transcriptions on the wall. This doesn't really work the same with chiseled tough bricks though, it kind of looks out of place. These brand new chiseled tough blocks can be used to make really nice looking pillars because of their unique designs, and if you want to make a fence out of tough walls, it actually looks really nice mixing them all together. You can even put one more block up on some parts like this, and then place a heavy core on top, and it kind of looks like a light that isn't on. If you pair the new tough walls with a few iron blocks like this, it looks like some kind of power station thing that would probably look good on top of a building or something. And I also found this robot guy you can make, which uses all the new blocks in the build, including the heavy cores for the eyes. I don't know why, but it kind of looks more like a frog than a robot. Speaking of heavy cores, the heavy core is actually a really useful block for builds. Well, it probably is for someone who actually knows how to build. But still, you can place it on top of a table like this, and it kind of looks like a mug or a thermos. And as we saw earlier, if you place it in an item frame, it kind of looks like eyes, which is especially scary if you just place it around a dark cave like this. I'd say I sure hope no one's watching me, but this is a video, so I hope you are. A mace is made from a heavy core, and it kind of looks like a utensil when it's placed on the table from earlier, and if you want to use the heavy cores as eyes without an item frame, I accidentally built this crab out of tough. You can also build this crab out of copper if you prefer your crabs to be cooked before you put eyes on them. Remember what we could have had instead of the armadillo. Now obviously our crab is pretty cursed, but there are some even more insane build hacks coming later in this video. But first we have these copper trees, which are just oak trees except the leaves are replaced with copper grates. And if you really want to 1.21ify this, you can replace the logs with a tough block 
block of your choice to really make this look like a 100% real tree. You can also place a bunch of water beside your tree like this, and you can even make one of these water lilies with a copper trap door and a coral fan on top. Why is this thing called a brain coral fan? What is Minecraft hiding from us? Whatever they're hiding is probably in these pipes, which you can make out of copper trap doors like this, and if you want to just make a bridge out of copper trap doors, you can do that. Not really sure if this is a build hack though, it's just a bridge. Copper grates are really useful, as since they are see-through, you can use them to make windows like this. Guys, I swear I'm not in prison. And if you want to use them for something that looks less like you committed a crime, you can make some fences by mixing them with other copper blocks as well. You can also just switch the grates out for a trap door for a different window design, and this also works with the fences, although it looks a lot easier for trespassers to climb them now. The copper bulb is a new block that emits light, and you know what that means? Lamps. You can make this simple lamp design using either oxidized or normal copper plus some similar colored fences like this, or if you want to be fancier, you can place some copper blocks as a base like this, put a tough wall above it here, and then add some fences on top of the wall, and finally a slab, a trap door, and a bulb like this. Now yes, this is sir. a better looking lamp than the first one. But if you want to be even fancier, you can make a double lamp like this, and honestly I think this one is a little bit too overkill. I mean why do we even need a third lantern in the middle? And with these lamps, you're probably going to want to add a road underneath them so that they have something to actually light up. And if you want to add a sewer entrance, you can move two of the stairs so that they are facing like this, and then add some copper grates underneath to look like a cool sewer entrance. Just make sure that you don't accidentally drop your phone in it. Now it's almost time for some cursed build hacks. But first we have this copper gear which can be made using some of the new copper blocks, and if this gear is too much for you, you can shrink it down a bit like this if we remove the trap doors. You can also place a copper block on the roof of a cave, and then place a wall and a fence underneath to make an artificial dripstone like this, and this actually comes in both colors as you can see, although the oxidized one looks more like an icicle than a dripstone. Another thing you can hang on the roof is a copper bulb like this to make another type of lamp, and if you want to build a copper staircase, you can now add some copper grates underneath the stairs, and also put some copper trap doors on the sides for more detail. If you want to add some scary windows to your house, you can use the new trial spawners as an ominous window window design like this, and this can also be used as a fence design if you have some kind of haunted mansion or something. A trial spawner can also be used as a bird cage if you right click on it with a parrot spawn egg so it traps the bird inside. Of course this is except for the fire, and the spinning, and the fact that it spawns parrots. Okay that one was kind of bad, I'm not gonna lie. An ominous key can kind of look like a painting of a tree if you place it in an item frame on the wall of your house. And another thing that can go in an item frame is a breeze rod paired with a blaze rod which is meant to look like like the hot and cold on a water tap. Something that's less of a build hack and more of a cool trick is this wind charge launcher which you can make by angling four dispensers full of wind charges towards you. Okay, I don't know how it turned infinite, but I'm not complaining. It's kind of like a trampoline now. If you place some copper bulbs like this and then put some tough in the middle, you can create a portal to the secret copper dimension. And now it's time to show you some absolutely cursed build hacks that should not be used ever, mainly because they're really stupid. First off, if you throw a wind charge and then you use the new slash tick freeze command, you can make a really cool smoke effect that you can use in your builds, although now the entire rest of the game is frozen, so this might not be that useful. You can also trap a bogged in some sand like this, and it will make it look like someone died while traveling the desert. When an armadillo rolls up into a ball, you can use this opportunity to use the armadillo as a soccer ball that you can even play with using a knockback sword like this. And a rolled up armadillo can also look like some boxes on the ground or on some shelves depending on where you place it. Just like earlier, if you put a bogged in some powdered snow, it will look like somebody died while traveling in the snow. The only problem with this one is that the bogged actually does die in the snow eventually. And finally, if you spawn a breeze in some water, it kinda looks like a jellyfish. Okay yeah, that's enough cursed build hacks, that one was insanely stupid. This is a street drain that is built using the new copper grates as well as some tough blocks, and it's a shame that you can't waterlog the copper grates, as this would actually be really cool. And if you just place a copper bulb in the sky like this, and add a lever underneath, it can look like one of those floating lanterns that are for Chinese New Year I think. I'm probably wrong about that, don't get mad at me. You can also switch the copper bulb out for one of these frog lights like this, and then you can place either oxidized trapdoors or regular copper trapdoors on the outside for another one of these lamp designs as well. And now with these trapdoors, you can also use them as a curtain thing on the side of your windows instead of using them as windows like we did earlier. And if you want to make another lamp, like we haven't made enough already, we can place some of the new tough blocks like this and then put a copper bulb with copper trapdoors around it like this, and another weird lamp 
design I've seen is this copper bulb on top of a dragon egg with some buttons on it so you can actually turn it on and off. And somehow I forgot the fact that these new trap doors can be used as railings on the side of like a factory upper level. And you can also place some copper grates to make a nice floor to go with the trap door railings as well. And we can finally make a power station using some of the blocks like this to complete our factory. For these next build hacks, I decided to go find them in the new structure, the trial chambers. And the first one is just using these copper grates as like an entry to a tunnel type of thing. You could also use these copper grates as like support beams on the roof, similar to how they are used in the structure here. And there are some really cool mixes of tough blocks used in the wall design of this structure, which isn't really a build hack, but it's still pretty useful to know. I also found out that you can actually waterlog these grates, which makes the street drain from earlier look a lot better now that I know this. And you can also build the face of a breeze like this if you ever wanted to do this, although I'm not really sure why you would. This combo of blocks looks pretty cool in the middle of a fountain, and you can use these trap doors to make little hidden tunnels inside of your builds as well. The end of this tunnel looks pretty cool, especially with the X in the middle, it kind of looks like one of those things you have to turn to open a vault door, and probably my favorite Mojang approved build that I found is this secret room in the trial chambers, which isn't a build hack, but I just thought it was cool that I found a secret room. There's also another secret room, this is so cool. And that concludes the trial chambers build hacks, I'm honestly surprised I even found any. Now that we've seen all these different build hacks, it's time to put my skills to the test, because in the next 20 minutes, I'm gonna be building a house using only 1.21 blocks. I started by making an outline out of only copper blocks, mixing some chiseled copper and trapdoors in as well. And then I started building a wall using all different types of tough, kinda like how they do it in the trial chambers. I then built a roof using more of these copper blocks, and once I finished the outline of the house, this is what it looked like. I'm surprised this even looks good. Next I added some windows out of the copper grates with trapdoors on the side, and I used the new tough slabs and walls to add a little bit more detail to the front of the house. We'll just pretend I did this on the other sides as well. Now let's fill in the floor with one of the tough patterns from earlier, and I'm also going to add a staircase using the new copper grates underneath, and the trapdoors will act as railings as well. Next I decked out the bottom floor with some of the crafter build hacks from earlier, and then I built a crafter TV on the top floor like this. To finally give the outside a bit of detail, I added some copper bulb lamps like this, and then I made a road like we saw earlier so I could use this storm drain build hack. Then finally I added some detail that doesn't use 1.21 blocks, but it just makes the house look a little bit nicer overall. Yeah, I guess the 1.21 blocks are actually really useful. I somehow made a house that looks really good. Also, the different copper blocks are intentional. I definitely didn't use normal copper instead of waxed by accident. This is a TV that sort of looks like plankton for some reason, and to build this, you need to place an item frame with a glass pane over a stone block, and then you have to throw two tridents at the top like this. You can also build a laptop using a similar setup, except using a pressure plate and trapdoor instead. Another household item you can build with a pressure plate and trapdoor is a chair, which is basically just a laptop on top of scaffolding. There's also another chair which you can build using any type of wood, but it's a little big. And there's this chair you can make as well, which actually looks pretty cool. Just make sure you don't fall through the cushion while you're sitting on it. Something that is in almost everyone's house is a chandelier. What? You don't have one? Okay, maybe it's not this fancy, but I'm sure everyone has a small chandelier that can be built like this with signs all around the outside of it. It's more like a lamp, I'm pretty sure, but calling it a chandelier makes it seem fancy. If you want to build a kitchen, you'll probably need a fridge, and luckily you can build one using quartz, some item frames with this slab in it, and some banners. And if you even want to take this a step further, you can place a dispenser behind the banner and then put some food in it so it's more realistic. Speaking of food, you can use a waterlocked slab to make pasta like yes, this, sir. and you can also use a dispenser to place some armor stands inside of a slab and make a tiny grill cooking meat like this. If you eat too much food, you're gonna want to use the bathroom, and luckily you can make a toilet by placing a diamond helmet as water under a stair like this. And after using the bathroom, you might want to light some scented candles, which you can make really long by placing an end rod underneath. Finally, you can make a garbage bin that actually works by placing a bunch of paintings around a cactus. And if for some reason you want a large clock in your house, you can build one by placing some slabs on the side, a slab and sign like this, a block with an item frame on top, and then a bell in the middle. It's supposed to do that every hour. This very large trophy that definitely wouldn't fit on a shelf. And a super large rifle that is made out of wood, which really has me questioning if it would work. You can also make a witch pot, which is just a respawn anchor with trap doors around it. And you can make a dragon head that looks like it has a sword going through it, and you can even add ketchup. That's definitely what this is. If those builds weren't random enough, you can make a guy who got locked up using item frames and an armor stand like this. And you can make a Lego brick if you manage to get your hands on some colored heads. 
minutes. If you didn't like the idea of killing the ender dragon earlier, you can just make a regular upside down sword like this. And by placing a carpet underneath a block like this, and then putting an armor stand through it, you can create a chessboard by giving it a chain helmet and putting a pressure plate underneath it. If you build a cube of ice like this, and then put a Steve armor stand inside of it, you can push some ice on top of him and make a man who is freezing to death. You can also make some cracked ice by placing glow lichen on top of it, and you can build a penguin by using some concrete like this, a beak, and then placing some banners on the front and the sides. You can place a stair in a slab like this, some signs on the side, and a fence gate on the back to make a sled, and if you want to give this sled some power, you can attach a dog to the front of it like this. Come on, hurry up, go faster! If you need more power for your sled, you can put some stairs like this, add a carpet on the back, and then place some fence gates on the side to make a reindeer. Okay, now this thing should be yes, super sir. fast, we got Rudolph pulling it. Reindeers help deliver gifts, so here's a gift made from a kelp block and candles, and here's a happy kid who just got what he wanted for Christmas. I'm not gonna let that happen, I'm a hater. You can make a small tree by placing azalea leaves on top of a dead bush, and you are even able to make that tree dead with some mangrove roots on top instead. You can make another cool plant by placing coral on top of some waterlogged slabs, and if you want to make some bulrushes, you can place some glass panes like this with a brown candle on top. You can also make another type of bulrush like this, as seen in my previous build hack video. Another outdoor build is the swing, which is made by placing some upside down lightning rods like this, and then putting some trap doors underneath. You can also place four trap doors like this with a waterlogged slab in the middle, and then place an egg and some coral on top to make a nest. You can even put this in a tree to be more realistic, although it looks very unnatural. There are a lot of bugs outside, and you can make one of them by placing a button through an item frame like this. You can also make a water cart, whatever that is, by placing some slabs like this, with trap doors and some fence gates on the side, and then some barrels and a sign on top, and a tripwire as a faucet like this. Another thing with wheels is a wheelbarrow, which is made with these three blocks, and you can even fill it up by putting some compost in the middle. You can place a candle on top of melons and pumpkins to give them a stem, or you can use a sea pickle depending on how big you want it to be. You can also make a pineapple by putting this vine thing on top of a shroom light like this, and if you want to build a cake, you can place a piece of dirt and put some snow on top, and then you can add redstone on the top as a strawberry. This cake probably tastes really bad though, it's made out of dirt. Apparently fish barrels are real, and you can make a salmon barrel with a raw copper block and some trapdoors on the side. Or you can change it out for a raw iron block if you want to make a cod barrel instead. Another type of barrel is a honey barrel, and this time I'm actually not sure what that is, I've never heard of a honey barrel before. If you want to make your dinner table look more realistic, you can place a pressure plate on top of an item frame and place some food in it to look like a plate like this. And you can even add some condiments on the table and place some sea pickles on the side which kind of look like cups. So much detail just for you to eat all the food in two seconds. If you have a dog, you can build a small dog house by placing five trap doors like this with a couple more trap doors on the top. And you can even place a dog bowl on the side to give him something to drink. Another dog bowl you can do is this design using a decorated pot and pairing them together looks like both food and drink. If you don't have a dog, you might have a cat, and there's also a cool cat structure you can build. First, place a scaffolding and trapdoors like this, add some fences on the back, and then place a couple carpets on top, and then you have a nice place for your cat to live. You might also have a parrot, in which you can also give a house. Well, sort of. In order to do this build, you have to push a piece of glass over top of the parrot, which is probably seen as animal cruelty. So something you can do that is less cruel is this bird bath, which uses a waterlogged slab and some signs on the side. Or you can place a hanging sign like this as a parrot perch. You are also able to use a bell if you don't think the hanging sign looks good enough. And you can also build a cage which is slightly less evil, and it's built using fences like this, a slab and a trapdoor on top, and a chain and scaffolding attached underneath. This build also exceeds the build size limit for this video, but I'm just gonna let it slide because it looks pretty cool. The last build in the pets category is this snail, which I'm not really sure if it counts as a pet. Snails are also really slow, so the fact that it doesn't move might actually not matter. Something that for some reason isn't in Minecraft is balloons, but with a colored block, a fence, and a little animal cruelty, it is actually possible to have balloons in Minecraft. Another thing that is also not in Minecraft is hot springs, but that can be changed by placing some trap doors and some campfires underneath a pool of water. You can also do the same technique by placing campfires under lava to get some smoky lava, and this time you don't even need the trap doors. I would be careful when swimming in this one though, because it might be a little too hot. If you're tired of how the regular TNT looks, or just scared of building with it in case something like this happens, then you can actually place a barrel like this and put some signs on the side that say TNT to make an old looking block of TNT. You can even highlight the signs in white to make the text stand out and add a candle on top to look like a fuse. If you aren't afraid of using 
using TNT to build, you can also place a bunch of TNT like this and then put some candles on top and they will kind of look like individual dynamite sticks. You can even light them if you want, but just be careful you don't accidentally misclick. If you do set off the TNT by accident, it might be possible you need to build a grave. And luckily you can do that with three podzel blocks like this, an anvil, a skull of your choice, and a couple of flowers, and then you have a tiny gravestone for whoever died as a result of your TNT accident. Another random build hack is this super thin ladder, which is just a ladder placed on trapdoors. And something really cool you can do is place trapdoors alternating like this with ladders on each of them, and you can make a one block spaced working ladder. These tiki torches, which you can make using bamboo fences. And if you want to add some extra detail, you can attach a mob with a lead to the top, but obviously you will have to. You can also make one of those bull rush things that are found in swamps, and if you want to make corn, you can place a bamboo fence on top of two bamboo sticks instead. You can also place some bamboo fences alongside some real bamboo to make it look like dead bamboo, and you can even take it a step further with some oak fences which look extra dead. If you want to sell some bamboo on the black market, you can place some signs around the bamboo blocks and it will look like it's packaged up, or you can also stack a bunch of bamboo rafts to make a pile of bamboo. Another cool thing you can do with bamboo is place Place an item frame underneath a bamboo button to make a block of cheese, but this is probably some pretty moldy cheese. There are a lot of things you can make with a decorated pot, such as this pillar design, this tiny lamp, or this palm tree, which you can even mix with some of the different designs to look like carvings in the wood. But something really cool you can do with these pots is if you place one of these in the ground and then you put a carpet on top of it, it kind of looks like a pet bowl for your dog, or your cat, or your person. You can also place a pot underneath a moss carpet and depending on what's around you, it can either look like an anthill or a landmine. If you place these pots with a bunch of gold, they kind of look like money bags, and if you place them with some TNT and then light a candle on top of it, it kind of looks like a bomb that's about to explode. Speaking of bombs, you can also hang one of these pots from a chain and then put a campfire under it like this, and it kind of looks like a cooking pot. You can also build a faucet type thing coming out of the ground and then place a glass pane and a pot underneath it to make it look like it's being filled up with water. Another cool thing you can do is place some pots in a palm tree and they will look like coconuts, and you can place Place a pot as a base for a street light like this, or you can even place it at the bottom of some bushes which looks slightly better than a cauldron. You can also place a couple of these pots on top of a house, and if you combine this with some cobwebs, it actually looks like a chimney. But one of the most interesting uses for these pots is to make a punching bag that you are actually able to use in-game. Okay, you can't really use it, but you also can't tell me I'm not Bruh. punching it. Now obviously those hacks are cool, but it's time to show you some of the most illegal build hacks known to man. If you apply this armor trim to a leather helmet, and then place it one block deep on an armor stand, you can use a piston to push a bookshelf through it, and it kind of looks like a stray book sitting on top of the shelf. Another thing you can do is dig out a big hole and then fill the whole thing with string, and after that you can do a little bit of animal cruelty and cover the whole thing up with carpets to get this rug design. Huh, that's weird, it looks like my rug is moving. Something else you can do with a sniffer is you can place some blocks through a sniffer's nose and then add a slab and some signs on the side to get a really interesting cushion design. Or if you're really ballin', you can use a sniffer's snout as a base to make a golden sink. Another thing you can do with a sniffer's nose is you can place it in the roof and then put a couple of fences and an end rod underneath it to make a lamp. Okay, this one was kind of a stretch. You can still see his face. Something you can do with a camel is you can place its head through a roof and it kind of looks like one of those bear heads you see on a wall in some rich guy's house. And you can also spawn a camel on the ground and then place some sand over top of its head to make it kind of look like a little sand dune coming out of the ground. You can even place a saddle on top of the camel to make it so you can sit down on the beach with a towel beneath you. Now those were definitely some illegal build hacks, but they still aren't the best build hacks in this video. This is a pumpkin, this is a melon, and this is an eggplant. Okay, it's not actually an eggplant, it's cherry wood with a sea pickle on top, but it actually looks pretty close. Another melon trick you can do is place bamboo planks with glow lichen beside a pumpkin, and it kind of looks like a dead pumpkin. Also, if you place a bamboo block in a field of melons, it kind of looks like some kind of squash. Everyone has seen these trap doors being used as a fence, but you can actually use a hanging sign to make a pretty cool fence as well. Speaking of hanging signs, you can do some really cool things with them, such as this one-way door which works by hanging a sign from the top and then hanging another sign underneath it. You can also make a little doggy door on the side of your house like this, or you can place it in front of your brand new cherry wood doghouse as well. Staying on the topic of farming, you can place two fences in the air like this, and if you place a hanging sign underneath it, it will look like a shovel that is sticking out of the dirt. You can also replace these fences with lightning rods or end rods to make different types of handles as well. If you want to make a 
a table, you can place some hanging signs like this to make table feet, and you can even make the table legs a bit longer if you like things that are longer. Hanging signs can also be used to make a broken jungle bridge or a useless ladder, depending on how you see it. And you can place them in a pattern like this to look like a gate that is restricting your access to something. Something I bet you've never seen is a stoplight in Minecraft. Okay, you've probably seen one, I just didn't know what to say, but by placing a red sign, an oak sign, and a blue sign like this, it can kind of look like a stoplight, even though two of the colors are wrong. Another thing you can do with the different sign colors is hang them over top of a campfire like this to make different stages of meat cooking. But probably the most interesting hanging sign hack is this parrot perch design. I'm just kidding, it's actually a working swing, which can be made using two chains like this, a hanging sign on each side, a trapdoor on the bottom middle, and then a boat as a seat. And after you do that, you have a working swing. Well, you can't really swing on it, but I mean I'm sitting on it, so it kind of works. You can also make another swing by doing the same thing as before, except instead of placing one trapdoor, you place three on the bottom and then three on the back to get another really cool swing design. This time you aren't able to sit on it. If you're trying to be some type of super villain, all you have to do is place some redstone behind one of the chiseled bookshelves, and then you can attach a couple regular bookshelves to some sticky pistons to make a secret door inside of your library. Something else you can do with chiseled bookshelves is build a cool floor design like this, and you can even make the bookshelf look like eyes when you put a slab in front of it. If you place the bookshelf with a stone slab in a cave, it kind of looks like something is staring at you through a crack in the wall, but that isn't the coolest thing you can do with the chiseled bookshelf. If you place a bunch of bookshelves beside each other, you can actually build things using the books inside of the bookshelves. I guess suspicious sand isn't the only thing that's oh sus God. in this update. Minecraft 1.20 adds a piglin head, and what can you do with it? Well, to start, you can place it on top of an armor stand, but that's boring. Instead, if you want a piglin in the overworld, you can place a piglin head on top of a sign, and it will kind of look like a tiny piglin. And if you really want to be him, you can make a hanging sign float, attach two signs on the side, and then add a banner on the back and a piglin head on top to create the boss piglin. His outfit kind of looks like Lord Farquaad. If you want to build some tiny birds, you probably wouldn't think of using a piglin head, but because of the floppy ears, it actually kind of looks like birds in the sky. Of course, you have to make sure not to look at the other side, though. If you place a piglin head on the ground and then put a bunch of redstone around it, it looks like a piglin was just decapitated. And if you take it a step further, you can build up with some fences and place some chains and hang a red sign under it to make it look like a guillotine just chopped off its head. Have you ever wanted to build a giant snail? You probably haven't. But you can, by placing a cherry slab, a sideways cherry cherry log, and a nether brick wall with a couple of candles on the top. Now we have giant snails to go with our giant spiders. Another giant animal you can build with cherry wood is a pig. If you place two upside down stairs like this and add some slabs on the top, you get a pig. You can then add a button on each side for eyes and a cherry button for a nose and a tail for extra detail. Speaking of pigs, you can also make pork with cherry wood. If you place a sideways cherry log and then attach it to two fences using chains, it kind of looks like a piece of ham is being cooked over a fire. Another cool cherry wood build is this garden fence, which can be made using an illegal trapdoor technique that I didn't even know existed. You can even climb this thing if you try hard enough, so that's cool. Another thing you can put in your garden is a cherry tree, but not that one, that one is lame. If you use cherry fences as logs and pair it with azalea leaves, you can make a really cool looking miniature tree. Something else that looks cool is this trapdoor window, which you can make using bamboo or cherry wood trapdoors depending on your build. In Minecraft 1.20, a pink boat will be added, but if you think this design is boring, you can actually make your own pink boat instead. If you place some slabs in the water like this and then add a fence in the middle, you can move two boats as close to the fence as possible and then add some trapdoors on the side and a flag on the top to make a better looking boat. The only problem is this boat doesn't really move. If you place a netherite upgrade in an item frame, you can use it as an up or down arrow for like an elevator or something, I don't really know. This single warden who really wants to kill me but he can't, so he does this. Which is cool and all, but it isn't satisfying. So what will happen if I spawn a hundred wardens and have them do the same thing. Oh my god, I'm pretty sure I went so high that it bounced me. And sure, that was satisfying, but not as satisfying as cutting down bamboo in this bamboo-only world, which I actually can't stop doing. And what's even more insane is watching this from above, just like covering the entire world in skulk, which you can do with the help of a couple million ravagers and a skulk catalyst. And now we wait as the entire world turns into skulk. Wait, I wonder what would happen if I added even more of these. Okay, I think I broke it. There's a literal ravager fountain coming from the sky. Oh my god. This is a chest full of random materials, which if placed a bunch of times like this, you can break all the chests and watch all the items fall out, which looks pretty nice. But the best part of this isn't the items falling, it's picking them up, which sounds super satisfying.
I could literally do this for hours. Something else you can do is place a bunch of shulkers full of netherite above a lava pool, and then when you break them, this happens. And if you use a command block to place an infinite block like this, and then you use another command block to give yourself a 1 durability pickaxe every tick, you can infinitely break pickaxes, which makes this very satisfying sound. Uh oh, I think I'm sick. I'm throwing up pickaxes. This is working quicksand in Minecraft, which can be made using this secret formula. First, you place some soul sand on the bottom, then you place some water above, and then you place some cobwebs on top of all that, and after that, you need to just place some sand on top that's ready to be dropped in. And now you can drop the sand and watch it all fall into place, which is pretty satisfying. After that, you have a working quicksand that you can't escape, but that's not the most satisfying part. If you remove the cobwebs like this, and then drop some more sand on the top, you can make this really cool bubbling effect, which looks like it doesn't even belong in the game. This effect can also be used in a square like this, which looks pretty nice, especially when all the sand and gravel breaks at the end. Or you can drop a line of sand and gravel like this, which kind of looks like a worm when it first drops. Another thing I found that looks pretty cool is this concrete pipe powder turning to concrete like this, and I also tried it in a line which looks pretty nice as well. This is a village that has a massive amount of dripstone above it which is already kinda cool to look at, and I'm going to be dropping the dripstone on the village using this machine here. Oh my god, I think my PC is going to explode. Hopefully it looks good on replay cause I literally can't see anything. Okay, somehow we actually had a couple of survivors this time, but I'm going to add a layer of anvils, sand, and gravel to drop on the village as well. And now let's spawn Timothy, hopefully he survives. Okay, first let's drop the anvils. That was much less laggy. Now let's add some sand. It's looking like Bikini Bottom down there. And finally the gravel. Okay, there's no way Timothy survived all that. Oh wait, he's actually right here. Honestly, doing that had me feeling like I was 9 years old again, so let's try some things we all did as kids in Minecraft. First I'm going to be burning down a forest. Okay, this is taking forever. I guess I have to do it the old-fashioned way. Now that's some good forest burning. What about blowing up a ton of TNT? I think this was a mistake. If you make a box like this, and then place a repeating command block to spawn zombies, you can make an infinitely dying zombie. That's not what I meant to do. What you can actually do is spawn a bunch of zombies inside of the box, and then you can kill them all with a sweeping edge 100 sword, and it's honestly pretty satisfying. I wonder what happens if we make the box even bigger. Okay, that was so much better. Another satisfying way to kill a bunch of mobs is with a piercing crossbow. But this crossbow isn't gonna cut it. It only killed four of them. We need a max piercing crossbow. Alright, and let's kill the villagers in three, two, one... Okay, it didn't reach the end, but we'll just pretend it did. What happens if you break these plants that go up to sky limit? It's literally raining twisted vines. Now let's do the cactus. Okay, that one actually looked kind of nice. What about the sugar cane? Whatever this thing is. And finally, bamboo. Bamboo definitely has my favorite sound out of these. But something that might sound better is a massive dripstone hitting the ground. Okay, let's just use this genius redstone timer to make sure we don't miss the sound. And now we fall all the way to the bottom. I like how it just gets faster the more that fall. Apparently if you place a bunch of end crystals inside of each other, it looks really satisfying. But it doesn't seem to be working for me, so I guess we have to use a command block. I think we placed them on the wrong block, but it's definitely working. This thing actually looks so cool, I can't believe this is in Minecraft. Wait, I wonder what happens if we touch it. For this next one, let's build a giant cactus farm. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Just watching them pop up all over the place is really satisfying. Another satisfying thing we can do is place skulk sensors in a row like this, and then we can fill all the empty slots up with TNT. And now finally, if we drop an item on it, it makes this really cool pulsing effect. Oh yeah, I forgot it would all blow up. For this next experiment, we are going to need a massive pyramid, so let's build that. Okay, that literally took me almost 30 minutes and I didn't even finish it. But now what we can do is place water in the middle and watch it all flow down the pyramid. Was that worth the 30 minute wait? Probably not. We can also drain all the water as well, but it's definitely not as satisfying as watching it flow down the pyramid. Earlier, we dropped a bunch of anvils on a village, but I wonder what it would look like if we dropped it on a regular world. Okay, it kind of just started. I didn't mean for that to happen. 
but yeah, that was still pretty cool. Now let's take a break from experiments and check out some of the most satisfying maps in Minecraft. These are seven colored rings made by Bosca Winks, and when you fly through them one after another, it's actually really cool to look at. Just like this massive spiral made by Amy Oak, which looks especially cool if you fly through it with an elytra like this. This is an island in the shape of a Mobius strip that was also made by Amy Oak, which I honestly have no idea how it works, but it's definitely really satisfying to look at. And another thing that I don't understand is this Penrose triangle made by Alaskata, which also looks really cool from far away. Wait, I wonder what will happen if I turn it to sand. These next three builds were made by Adamax EP, and these are more like illusions, but they are still really satisfying to look at, especially this one, which will probably make you dizzy if you spin fast enough. If you put a Jeb name tag on a sheep, it makes it rainbow, so I wonder what will happen if I make a big pit and fill it with Jeb sheep. This is pretty normal, I see this every day in survival. Okay, now this is insane, you can barely even tell that there are sheep in the hole. Next, let's create a sand-only world and see what happens. Oh wait, I have to break the block first. There's a short amount of time before it becomes way too laggy. So now let's make it laggier with concrete. This would probably look so cool if it wasn't a slideshow. Next, I decided to make a sapling-only world, and watching them grow was actually really satisfying. I can't move on until all the holes are filled. Another experiment similar to this idea is making a drip leaf-only world. I honestly had no idea what would happen with this one, but it's probably one of my favorites so far. And the last world I made was a cactus-only world. But it didn't really go well, so we'll just move on. If you place two slabs like this, and then you push them together with a piston, you can make an illegal slab. So, I wonder what it would look like if we copied the build a bunch of times to make a wall of illegal slabs. Honestly, I'm not sure if this is satisfying, but it's definitely pretty cool, and also really laggy. Picking up a ton of XP can also be pretty satisfying. Okay, it just won't stop. It's been doing this for like five minutes. And for the last experiment, I decided to put some bees in a nest. A lot of bees. Okay, if we set it to day, they should all come out at the same time. Oh my god. Yeah, I don't even know if that that was satisfying. It's kind of unsettling, actually. So you want to know what's in Minecraft 1.21? All the new mobs, new items, new places? You've come to the right place. Today, I'm going to be showing you everything new coming to Minecraft 1.21 so far. So first off, you want to visit the underground tunnels in Minecraft? We got the trial ruins, trial chambers. I keep getting them mixed up. This place adds a ton of new blocks and features, which we'll talk about later. And just like the underground tunnels, we got homeless people. I'm joking, by the way. No offense to the boss. A new mob that looks kind of like the Stray, but like, Swamp Edition. I think it's a few updates too late. This skeleton variant spawns in swamps, and instead of normal arrows, it shoots poisonous arrows at you, which is exactly what we needed. Another mob that can poison you. Last year they gave us the yeah, big yes, sniff sir. man, today we get the Bogged. But the Bogged isn't the only mob in 1.21. Another mob being added is the Armadillo, last year's mob vote winner, allegedly. I still don't know how it even won, there was some voter fraud or something. The first thing you'll notice about the Armadillo is that it's really scared of you. Yeah, whenever you get close to these guys, they just roll up into a ball. So the only way to actually get close to them is by crouching. They do make a really good soccer ball, though, if you don't. Now, if you want to breed some armadillos, you have to give them some spider eyes. That's kind of a weird item for that, I guess. But whatever. And if you want to harvest some scoot from these guys, you can take a brush and rub them with it. I don't know how my man isn't bald yet. And with these scoots, you can craft dog armor using this recipe. Similar to real life, you can now dress up your poodle however you like. But of course, in game, your dog actually gets some protection from it. Well, I don't know, maybe they are similar, because I wouldn't mess with this guy. You can combine dog armor with any dye to give your dogs all sorts of drip. And now we just need dog chains dog watches, dog shoes. But this isn't the only update that dogs received, as you can now find different breeds of dogs depending on what biome you're in. You can get a rusty wolf in the jungle, a striped wolf in the badlands, snowy wolf in a grove biome, the ashen wolf in a snowy taiga, the woods wolf in the forest, a chestnut wolf in the old growth spruce taiga, and don't confuse that with the old growth pine taiga that has a black wolf. And finally, we have the spotted wolf in the savannah, which kind of looks like all of the wolves mixed together. Kind of like how the new mob, the Breeze, looks like the Blaze, because I think they're related or something. I don't know. They both drop rods when you kill them. But do you want to see something really stupid? Why aren't they both the same model in your hands? Anyways, the Breeze attacks you with some wind stuff, kind of like the Big Bad Wolf, and they are found in the trial chambers, you know, the structure from before. And if you put the Breeze rod into a crafting slot, you can get these wind charges, which allow you to do these really cool rocket jumps. Yay. 
Another thing you can do with a breeze rod is combine it with a heavy core, and when you do that, you get a mace. Not to be confused with the stuff you spray, the mace is the newest weapon in Minecraft, and at 7 attack damage, swinging as fast as a sword, this weapon is basically just a diamond sword. That is, until you find out that the maze does more damage if you fall and then hit something with it. You've probably seen people one-shotting the warden with it, but if you haven't, here you go. Yeah, basically this thing is kind of insane. But it doesn't stop there, because you can also enchant your mace to make it even more powerful. The enchants are Breach, which has something to do with armor. I honestly don't even know what it does. Windburst, which gives the effect of a wind charge every time you hit something, which is actually pretty funny when you realize that you can fly with it. And finally we have Density, which makes the mace do even more damage when you're falling. Now I can just jump off the diving board to drop the warden. I don't even have to go up that far. But as I said before, the mace is made using a heavy core, and you've probably never heard of this retextured head block that unfortunately you can't actually wear on your head. And that is because the heavy core is found in the new trial vaults in the trial chambers. These vaults work pretty simply. First, you need to complete a trial by walking up to one of the trial spawners and getting it to spawn some mobs. The spawner will spawn a few waves of mobs before finally gifting you an item which has a chance of being this trial key. Once we have the trial key, we gotta find one of these things which is the trial vault. And then you right click it with the trial key to do even more more gambling until we eventually get a heavy core. Guys, we're gonna get the heavy core eventually, never give up. Something else you can get from these is the brand new bad omen potion. Not exactly what I was expecting to get out of the vending machine, but basically how this potion works is it replaces the bad omen that you used to get from killing a pillager with a flag. Now you actually have to consent to getting bad omen first by drinking the potion. Once you drink the omen potion, you can start a raid like usual, or you can visit the trial chambers and start an ominous trial. From what I can tell, the ominous trial is a little bit more difficult than the regular trial, and when you complete an ominous trial, there is a chance of getting an ominous trial key, which can just open the ominous vaults, which look like the other vaults, but just more scary. Drinking a potion with eyes is definitely a little weird, but fortunately there's a few potions being added that are a little bit less weird. The first potion is a wind charge potion, which you would think is made with a wind charge because of the name, but no, you gotta use the whole breeze rod to make a batch of these potions, and when a player or mob is affected with wind charge, Charging, it will just give off one of these wind charge effects when it dies. Similarly, the weaving potion, which is made with a cobweb, causes an entity to drop a few cobwebs when it dies. The oozing potion is brewed using an entire slime block, but if used properly, you can actually spend slime balls to make slime balls, as entities will spawn slimes after they die if they are affected with oozing. Unfortunately, this potion effect doesn't work with slimes though, so we can't get an infinite slime glitch going. The last potion is brewed with a stone block, which makes no sense how that's even doing anything. I mean, how are they brewing a whole stone block? And this potion is the infested potion. This potion should actually be renamed the annoying potion, as it gives a 5% chance of spawning a silverfish when taking damage, which obviously doesn't sound that bad until you get hit with the infested potion yourself. I guess now I'm the silverfish man. Speaking of new stuff in 1.21, there's a few new things that you can only get from trial chambers. To start, we have the new armor trims. This is the bolt armor trim, and this is the flow armor trim. It's based on the wind guy, I guess, but it actually looks pretty cool, unlike some other trims. There's the flow, guster, and scrape pottery shards, which can be found on pots around the trial chambers as well, and finally the vault can give you a flow or guster banner pattern if you're interested in those. Going back to the trial chambers, there are actually a lot of new blocks being added which are used in the making of this structure. Starting off, we have the most obvious one, which is these tough bricks that are basically all over this structure. Tough bricks are crafted by using 4 tough to make polished tough, which then can be used to create tough bricks with the same recipe. There are also these chiseled tough bricks found in the structure, which seem to give it a little more detail, and there is just regular chiseled tough that is mixed in with the other new blocks as well. Each one of these tough variants, including regular tough, also comes with new stairs, slabs, and walls. And overall, I think it's really cool that they actually made the tough block have a use, as it was just some random block that you find at deep slate level before. But tough isn't the only block that got a bunch of new variants, as there will be a lot of new copper based blocks in 1.21 as well. Starting with this block that is seen all over the new trial chambers structure, which is called the copper grate. The copper grate is unlike any other Minecraft block we've seen before, as it's sort of like a full block fence. 
Another unique copper block that is being added is the copper bulb, which sort of works like a redstone lamp, but it's a little more advanced, as it emits different light levels based on how oxidized the copper is. The copper bulb requires redstone to activate it if it isn't naturally spawning, and if it starts becoming oxidized, you can right-click it with an axe to unoxidize it, which I'm pretty sure isn't a new feature, but I never knew it existed, so I'm putting it in here. There is also a new block called chiseled copper, which features this X pattern on it that looks super cool, and there are copper doors and trap doors being added as well, which are the second type of metal doors to be in the game. The difference between iron doors and copper doors though is that you don't need redstone to open them. You can just right click them like any other wooden door instead. There also seems to be a handle looking thing that kind of looks like a key slot, and I think it would be cool if they made it so you can lock these doors with the new trial keys. If you play Minecraft, you probably know what a crafting table is, and if you don't, then I don't really know what you've been doing. But now you won't even have to use crafting tables anymore because there is a new auto crafter coming in Minecraft 1.21. You need these items to craft the auto crafter, and once you've crafted this thing, you can right click it and place items inside it similar to a regular crafting table. The only difference is that you also have to use redstone in order to complete the craft, you can't just take it out like a crafting table. The crafter only crafts one item at a time, meaning you have to spam it to get your items out, but this shouldn't be a problem if you're using it in some kind of redstone machine and not just pressing a button like this. Unfortunately, this is the only redstone I know how to do, so I won't be using the crafter. Another thing you can do is toggle the slots on and off, making it possible to automate recipes that don't take up the entire crafting area, and obviously you can use hoppers and droppers to fill this thing, because if you couldn't, it would kind of be useless. Another thing you can use hoppers and droppers to fill is the decorated pots that were actually added in 1.20, but now have a few new features being added to them. To start, you can right-click decorated pots to fill them with a single stack of items, which wasn't possible in the previous update. The only problem with storing your items in a pot is that you can't get them out without breaking the pot, so they really have more map making use as they can be used to hide items. You can also now shoot decorated pots to break them, and this not only works with arrows, but this also works with any projectile, including projectiles that are shot by mobs. Unfortunately, the breeze can't break them though. You can stack decorated pots up to 64, which wasn't a thing before. You used to just have to have a full inventory of them, and overall I think these changes are pretty cool. It's definitely a lot better than how the decorated pots were before. Another mob related change that is coming to Minecraft 1.21 involves bats. The mob that has been in the game for years has actually gotten a new texture added to it, similar to the vex changes that we saw in the last update. The bat also has a new flying animation, which looks a lot cooler than the old bat, and it can also hang underneath blocks, although I'm not sure if this is a new feature, it might have been in the game before. Overall, I think these bats look pretty cool, and I hope they continue updating old mobs in the future, because some of them could really use an upgrade. You've probably heard this noise when an enderman teleports away from you, but in the new update, this noise is is going to have another use, because now when you throw an ender pearl and it lands, you will hear this noise as well. This means the days of silently ender pearling on people are unfortunately over. The slash tick command is a new command that can be used to manipulate the speed of the game, and if you type slash tick rate and then a speed, you can actually speed up or slow down Minecraft without the use of an external program like you had to before. And you are also able to just completely freeze the game if you do slash tick freeze, which can be kinda cool, I mean look at this red cow. Another thing you can do is slash tick sprint and then a time, which will make the game go super fast until the chosen time is up, and this is definitely one of my favorite things you can do with this command, as it can help a lot with making time lapses. So far in 1.21, we've seen some pretty cool features, and I'm excited to see what more is added in the future snapshots. Apparently if you drop a totem of undying on the ground and land on it, you will live. Alright, so we got our totem here, and let's just drop it all the way down, and let's just fall down on top of the totem. Oh my god, that actually worked, what? Apparently you can MLG into a cauldron. All right, let's just go up on top of the cauldron and we'll fall all the way down. And no, this one does not work. I still would have died. Apparently, naming a rabbit Toast changes his skin. So let's just get our Toast name tag, and we'll place a rabbit like this, and let's just name him. And yeah, it actually changes his skin. I've never seen this skin before. That's actually pretty cool. Apparently, an Enderman can stand in a cauldron. So as you know, when you put an Enderman in water, it just TPs away like that. But what if you put an Enderman in a cauldron? Wow, he's actually just standing in the water. He doesn't even TP away. Can fish breathe on land with water breathing? All right, this one sounds really stupid. There's no way 
way this will work, but let's try it. And now the fish has water breathing, so let's see if it suffocates. Okay, yeah, the fish is taking damage, and he died. This one is false. Apparently, a gold pickaxe mines faster than netherite. So, this is how fast netherite is able to mine stone, and this is how fast gold is able to mine stone. This is actually true. It's noticeably faster. But, for some reason, when you put efficiency 5 on both of the pickaxes, the netherite one becomes faster. I don't even understand how that works. Apparently, you can make glowing signs. So, if we just take our regular sign here, and we get a glowing sack, apparently this will make it glow. No way, it actually makes it glow. How did I not know this exists? Apparently, you are also able to dye signs. Alright, so it's the same thing as the ink sack. And yeah, this one works as well. This is so cool. You guys should definitely do what it says on the sign, by the way. It's not me telling you. It's the sign. Apparently, you can tow a boat with a lead. So, we have our boat right here, and let's just right-click it with the lead, and nothing seems to be happening right now. But what if I put a pig in the boat, and then I put a lead on the pig? Okay, it just takes the pig out of the boat. This one isn't true. Apparently, one block of water is able to hydrate crops that are four blocks away. So, let's just put our water here, and we'll just hoe all this dirt. And yeah, it's hydrating the crops all the way over here, even though the water is here. Can you smelt an iron door into iron nuggets? So, as you know, you can smelt gold and iron tools into nuggets like this. As you can see, I have a nugget right here. But can you do this with iron doors? No, it doesn't look like anything's happening. This is false. Will a baby villager jump on a bed? So, let's just spawn a baby villager like this, and apparently he's supposed to just jump on this bed randomly. Okay, well, right now he's following his parents, so we have to take care of that. And now let's see if he jumps on this bed. Okay, he's standing on the bed, and yeah, he's jumping on the bed. This one is true. Apparently, throwing an XP bottle upwards gives more XP. So let's just throw it down first. And we got exactly one level. And now let's try throwing the bottle upwards. And we got a little bit more XP. This one might be true, but it also might be random, so I'm not really sure if it's true or not. Apparently, there's an easy trick to find diamonds 100% of the time. So if we go to the middle of a clay patch like this, and then we go six blocks south, apparently under the seventh block, there will always be diamonds. So let's just mine down like this. And we found gold, but that's not diamonds, so let's keep mining. And we've hit the void, and there's no diamonds. I don't think this one is true. Apparently, a hoglin can survive a 50 block fall. So we have our hoglin here, and I'm sorry, buddy, but you're going off the edge. And no, the hoglin did not survive. This one is false. Apparently, you can sleep underneath lava without dying. So we have our lava bed here, and let's just sleep in the bed. And wow, this is actually working. How am I even sleeping in here? Speaking of dying in lava, apparently witches can't die in lava as well. So let's spawn a witch, and she's dying right now. Oh wait, they actually drink the fire res pot and live. This one's true, witches can't die in lava. Apparently the top of a desert temple fits a full beacon perfectly. So let's just fill in all of this with netherite, because you know this is a perfectly legit beacon. And yeah, now we have a perfectly fitting beacon. I guess we know who really built the pyramids. Apparently you can use a sweet berry bush to clutch. And yeah, this one is true. I took no damage. Apparently, a shield can block splash potions. So let's put a harmful potion in this dispenser. And let's just hold our shield out like this. And this one is false. I still got hit by the potion, even though I was blocking it. Apparently, foxes can make a four block jump. So let's just put a chicken up here. And we'll spawn a bunch of foxes down here. And yeah, they jumped up and got that chicken immediately. This one is true. Apparently, you can walk over magma blocks and campfires without taking damage if you have frost walker boots. So let's just make the frost walker boots. And yeah, the magma's true. I'm not taking any damage. But what about the campfires? Yeah, this one is also true. That's so cool. I never knew this existed. But now this makes me wonder if you can walk in lava with frost walker boots and not take any damage. Okay, this one is not true. You still die to lava if you have frost walker boots on. Apparently, you can mine a beacon with your fist. So let's just mine this thing. And yeah, it still drops the beacon. Even though it takes a while to mine it, this one is true. Apparently, if you kill a zombie pigman in one hit, the other ones won't attack you. So let's just one hit this pig man. And yeah, they're not attacking me. This one is true. Can you put a pumpkin on a villager's head with a dispenser? So let's just trap our villager and we'll put a dispenser here. Now let's add the pumpkin to the dispenser and let's see if it puts this on his head. Yeah, this one's actually true. The villager's wearing a pumpkin now. Apparently you can trap a warden by quickly placing wool over top of him. So let's just start spawning our warden like this. And if we place wool like this, apparently this traps the warden. And yeah, this one is true. The warden is just kind of trapped in wool now. That's so funny. Apparently you can put out a campfire by right-clicking it with a shovel. And yeah, this is true. It puts out all the campfires instantly. Apparently, if you right-click a villager during a raid, it will sweat. So let's just right-click this guy. And I swear I just saw 
water particles coming from him. Yeah, there's water particles coming from him. This one is true. The villagers really do sweat during the raid. Apparently, a dolphin will pick up diamonds. So let's just throw some diamonds to this dolphin. And he's going back for them, I think. And yeah, the dolphin is picking up diamonds. That's so cool. He even throws them back to me. It's just like in LA, but underwater. Will a zombie chase an invisible villager? So we have our zombie right here. And let's just make this villager invisible. And we made the zombie invisible too. Okay, we have to redo that. All right, let's just try this again. And yeah, he's chasing the invisible villager. This guy has some really good eyesight, I guess. Will a grindstone remove a curse from an item? So let's just put these pants in the grindstone. And no, it literally does nothing. It just keeps the curse of binding on it. Apparently, if you trick a skeleton into lighting TNT, it will make creepers drop a ton of music discs. So let's just get the skeleton to shoot the TNT like this. And he shot the TNT. So let's see what happens. And yeah, they dropped a ton of music discs. That's so cool. I had no idea you could get music discs like this. Apparently, you can milk goats. Okay, I don't know how I've never heard of this one, but it actually makes sense. So let's see if it gives me milk. And yeah, the goat actually gives me milk. How did I not know this is true? Can you put two parrots on your shoulder? So let's just tame our parrots like this. And we got one parrot on our shoulder. Let's go for two. Okay, I don't really know if this one's true. He doesn't seem to be getting on- Oh wait, it actually worked. He got on my shoulder right when I thought it was false. Okay, I guess this one is true. You can dual wield parrots. But can you get three parrots? I don't think so. He's just running away from me. Will a totem of undying save me from slash kill? All right, so let's just slash kill. And no, the totem of undying did not save me, unfortunately. Apparently, throwing an instant health potion upwards will give you more health than throwing it down. So let's just throw a potion down like this. And as you can see, it gave me two hearts. So now let's throw one up in the air like this. And it still gave me two hearts. This one is false. Apparently, a witch can't die to instant damage potions. So let's just rain instant damage potions down. And yeah, the witch is just drinking instant health and it's countering it. This one's true. Can you make suspicious stew with a wither rose? So let's just put all these things in the crafting table. And yeah, you can make suspicious stew with a wither rose. This one is true. Will lightning turn a mushroom cow into a brown cow? So let's just spawn a lightning bolt. And yeah, it turns it into a brown cow, but not the brown cow you would expect. It's actually a brown mushroom cow. Will a baby piglin ride a baby hoglin? So let's get our baby hoglin right here. And we'll spawn a ton of baby piglins. And now let's see if one of these guys rides the hoglin. Okay, nothing is happening so far. Oh, and one of them actually is riding on the hoglin. This is true. And wait, multiple of them are stacking on top. You can make an entire piglin stack with this. This is so cool. Does soul fire do double the damage of regular fire? So let's just stand on the fire. And as you can see, it did half a heart to me. But now let's try standing on soul fire. Yeah, the soul fire does one heart. And the regular fire only does half a heart. This one is actually true. I had no idea. Apparently a flame bow can ignite a campfire. And yeah, that ignited the campfire. This one is true. Can you walk on powdered snow with frost walker boots? Okay, so this one would make a lot more sense than magma. So let's see if it's true. And no, it doesn't look like it's true. I've sunken in the snow. Apparently new emerald armor was added in 1.20. So obviously there was no new emerald armor added in 1.20, but you can put this armor trim on a full set of diamond armor. And as you can see, it kind of looks like emerald armor, even though you can still see the diamond a little bit. So I'll say this one is partly true, I guess. Apparently if you breed two different colors of sheep, it'll combine their colors. So let's just breed these sheep and it should make a purple sheep. And yeah, this is true. Now we have a baby purple sheep. This is kind of cool. Apparently you can farm crops in the nether. Okay, I'm not really sure why this would work, but let's just give it a try. Okay, and it kind of looks like these are hydrated somehow. Okay, I somehow placed one seed, but I'm not able to place seeds in these ones. That's so weird. So I guess this is partially true, I guess. I'm not really sure if this will actually grow. Apparently hostile mobs can't cross over rails. So let's just place some rails on the ground like this, and we'll spawn a bunch of zombies. And yeah, it looks like they can't get me past these rails. This one is somehow true. Apparently items can sink through mud into hoppers. So let's just throw some diamonds through here. And yeah, it looks like they sunk through the mud. Apparently if you ride in a minecart and then sleep in a bed, it'll make you sleep on the floor. Okay, it doesn't look like it worked. I'm pretty sure I'm still in the bed. This one is false. Apparently there will always be a lush cave underneath an azalea tree. So let's just try to find an azalea tree like this. Okay, and we finally found an azalea tree. So now we just have to mine underneath it. So let's just start mining down. And yeah, we've landed in a lush cave. This one is true. Apparently the warden can't kill you on carpet. So let's just stand on a carpet like this. And it's already looking kind of bad. I have the darkness effect. Okay, the warden is literally standing right beside me. There's no way he doesn't kill me, right? Okay, yeah, he's getting angry. Okay, yeah, that one's false. I don't know who thought of that. There's no way that was gonna work. Apparently, you can make infinite water with only one water bucket. So, if we place a block like this, and then mine out four like usual, and then we place our water right here, apparently, if we put kelp on these blocks, it'll make an infinite water source. So, let's just put kelp all over here, and it did change the water. So, let's just break this, and yeah, now we have infinite water from only one water bucket. That's so cool. Will a totem of undying work in the void? 
Alright, so let's just fall into the void. And no, the Totem of Undying does not work in the void, unfortunately. Apparently, Iron Golems don't take fall damage. So let's just push this guy off, and let's see if he takes fall damage. No, he actually didn't take fall damage. This one is true. I guess that's what happens when you're made of iron. You're just invincible. Can you mine Lapis Ore with a Stone Pickaxe? So we have regular Lapis, and let's just break it with a Stone Pick. And yeah, it actually dropped the Lapis. This is true. But now, can you break Deep Slate Lapis with a Stone Pick as well? Yeah, this one also works. I guess you only need a Stone Pick to collect Lapis. Is a diamond and a turtle egg the same texture? So we have our diamond right here, and we also have our turtle egg, and yeah, I can actually kind of see the similarities. Like, they have the exact same shape, and the shading is kind of the same as well. I don't know, let me know if you think these are the same texture or not in the comments. I'm pretty sure that they are. Apparently, if you dig straight down at your world spawn, there will always be diamonds. So let's just start digging straight down from where we spawn, and there was no sign of diamonds anywhere. This one is unfortunately false. Can you survive a fall by landing on a watermelon? So the logic behind this one is because it has water in the name. And no, it's not true. It was pretty obvious it isn't true, to be fair. Apparently, you can run over a one-block gap. So, let's just get a running start from back here. And no, I fell in the lava. Alright, let's just try it a few more times. And wait, I actually just ran right over the lava. Somehow, this one is true, but it only happens sometimes. So, I would still be careful if there's one block of lava like this. Apparently, you can survive four anvils dropped on your head. So, we have four anvils up here, as you can see. And let's just break the wood block that's holding all these anvils up. And yeah, I somehow survived four anvils getting dropped on my head. Although I'm stuck in the anvils now, so I'm not really sure if this is a good idea anyway. Apparently, if you throw diamond armor into lava, it will turn into netherite. Alright, so let's just throw a full set in here. And yeah, this one is definitely not true. If you fall for this, you deserve it, to be honest. Apparently, netherite armor can survive lava, though. So let's just throw our netherite armor in. The netherite armor actually swam back up. This one is true. Can you combine two different types of stairs by putting them in the board? So let's just place our two stairs like this, and we'll put a piston behind them, and apparently this will combine both of the stairs. Yeah, this one is true, and this is so weird. Like, look at the two stairs mixing right here. I'm pretty sure this is not supposed to happen. Apparently, turning a shulker invisible will make him lose his shell. Yeah, this one is true, and this looks so weird. There's literally just this little head right here. Apparently, you can spawn a giant slime. So, apparently using this command, I will spawn a giant slime. So let's just try it. Oh my god, this slime is massive. Yeah. Yeah, this one is definitely true. I would not want to run into this slime in my world. This guy is huge. And along with a giant slime, apparently you can spawn a giant magma cube as well. And yeah, it literally works the same as the slime, and I actually have no idea where he just went. He just flew away. Like, look when he jumps, he just completely disappears. This one is definitely true. Do zombie pigmen crush turtle eggs? So we have our zombie pigmen here, and yeah, they're literally just crushing the turtle eggs. That's kind of mean. I don't know why they would do that. Will a skeleton turn to a stray if you trap it in in powdered snow. Okay, he's shaking. And yeah, he turned into a stray. This one is true. Are you able to turn the wither invisible? Alright, let's splash him with invis. And no, we can still see the wither. And honestly, that's kind of good. The wither would be absolutely terrifying if you could make him invisible. If you smelt a wet sponge and you put a bucket underneath, apparently it'll fill the bucket with water. Yeah, this one is actually true. I guess if you need water and you only have a wet sponge, this is a good way to do it. Can you put a shulker box into a shulker box? Nope, you cannot. I'm clicking as you can see and nothing is happening. This one is false. Apparently, you can mine a dragon egg if you put it underwater. Okay, so as you know, you can't normally mine a dragon egg, so let's see if this works. Okay, no, the dragon egg just teleports away. This one isn't true. If you throw a trident with loyalty on it, and then you fill your inventory, apparently it'll chase you. So let's just throw our trident really far away like this, and now let's fill our entire inventory up quickly, and apparently the trident will just chase us, and yeah, the trident is just flying around me. This is so weird. Look at what it does when I stand still. This is so funny. Apparently, you can't blow up a nether star. So let's just light this TNT. And yeah, this one is true. The nether star just flew away, but it didn't explode. Will lightning turn a red mushroom into a brown mushroom? Similar to how it does that with the cows. Alright, let's just summon a lightning bolt. And no, this one isn't true. But the mushroom is still red. Will looting work if the sword is in your offhand? So let's just put this sword right here, and we'll hold out another sword, and let's kill the mushroom cows with our diamond sword instead. Alright, that one just dropped two beef and one leather. What about this guy? Alright, one beef and one leather. I don't think it's true. Looting would give way more. Apparently, if you type excited ZE into the crafting table, it changes your language. And yeah, wait, everything is completely different. I'm pretty sure it changed my game to pirate language. What is this?
this. Can a blaze light a campfire? So let's just get this blaze to shoot at us. Okay, yeah, he hit the campfire and it actually lit it up. This one is true. Apparently you can infinitely tower with powdered snow buckets. So if we place one like this and then we stand on the top and then we place another, we can grab the first bucket from the bottom and then build up like this and then we can just keep doing this. And as you can see, this is true. You're able to infinitely tower with powdered snow. This is kind of cool. Apparently there's a game rule that will completely disable the warden from spawning. And yeah, this is true. There's a game rule called do warden spawning and if you set it to false, the warden will no longer be able to spawn in your world. Can a bee survive a hit from the warden? Alright, I honestly have no idea how this one would be true. I mean, how is a bee gonna survive an entire warden? Okay, it looks like the warden's found him. Oh, and he's getting angry. And no, the bee did not survive a hit from the warden. This one is false. Will a camel protect you from taking damage from a ravager? So let's saddle up our camel and we'll just go in survival like this. And no, this one is not true. I'm still being hit by the ravager. If you jump on a cactus, you can jump two blocks high. Alright, so we've placed our cactus in our two block jump and I'm assuming I just have to do this and hopefully I'll be able to jump two blocks. Alright, I don't really know about this one, but I'm pretty sure that this works with fire, so let's just keep trying it. Come on, surely it'll let me jump two blocks. I don't know, maybe I'm just bad, but I'm gonna have to say this one is false. It's not working for me. Apparently, Skulk can't spread in water. So we have our Skulk catalysts right here, and let's kill this skeleton. And as you can see, the Skulk spreads, but apparently if there's water here, it won't spread, so we have to try this. Alright, let's just place water all over the Skulk, and we'll put down another skeleton. And this one's not true. I'm pretty sure I saw it spread. Yeah, this one isn't true. It's spreading underwater. Apparently, if you give an Alay an item, it can't explode. So we have our Alay right here, and we'll give him a diamond. And now let's place a ton of TNT all over the place. And we'll just put some diamonds here so we can go get them. And we'll light the TNT. The TNT didn't really hit him, but I didn't see him take damage. He just kind of got blown away. So I'm going to say this one is true. Apparently, if you ender pearl and then go in the end, it'll send you back to the overworld. Okay, and we'll just throw an ender pearl all the way over here. And now let's go in the end. And it should TP us any second. Okay, yeah, this one is false. It would have TP'd us by now. Apparently, all cats in a witch hut spawn as black cats. So as you can see, there's already a black cat right here. And we'll spawn our cats in the witch hut. And yeah, they're all black cats. That's so crazy. And as you can see, if I go over here, they're just normal cats. So it's literally just the witch hut. Wow, that's so weird. Apparently in the new update, you can summon the white enderman with a command. So I'm typing the summon command, and I don't see anything coming up for white enderman. This one is false. Apparently ancient debris resembles an old warped log. So we have a warped log here, and as you can see, this is what it looks like. And here's an ancient debris beside it. Apparently this is supposed to be an old warped log. It doesn't really look like it on the sides, but the top looks pretty similar. So I don't really know if this one is true. You guys let me know if you think this resembles a warped log or not. I honestly don't know. Apparently there's a a secret room under the village well. I'm pretty sure these village wells have been in Minecraft forever, so I'm pretty sure I would know about this if there was a secret room. And let's just mine the blocks out under here. I mean, there's a cave down here, but I'm pretty sure that's not a secret room. This one is false. Apparently, there's a secret new deep dark villager. So let's just spawn a villager. And no, this is just a normal villager. There's no new deep dark villager in this game. I'm sorry. Apparently, there's a secret room hidden under the igloo. So if we break this carpet here, there's supposed to be a hidden room somewhere under here. Wait, there's actually a trap door. And there's a ladder down to the bottom. What's down here? And yeah, there's actually a secret room down here, and it looks like there's a thing to cure a zombie villager down here. And you get this chest with a golden apple, so all you need is a weakness potion. Oh wait, you can actually get a weakness potion here too, so you can literally just cure this villager right here. That's so cool. Apparently, sniffers can sniff for seeds in the end. So we have our sniffer right here, and let's see if he can find some seeds. Alright, he's sniffing the air. This might be true. Okay, he's been sniffing for a long time, and he hasn't found anything yet. I don't think this one is true. Apparently, there's a new bat in the new update. So let's just spawn a bat right here. And yeah, this is actually a new bat. This looks so cool. Apparently you can now put items in a decorated pot. So we have our decorated pot right here. And let's just right click it with these diamonds. And it's doing something. Okay, now let's right click it to see if they're in the pot. Okay, I don't know. The pot's just kind of wiggling. Maybe we have to break the pot. And yeah, the diamonds came out of the pot. This one is true. You can put items in pots now. Can you break pots with arrows? All right, let's just shoot the pot. And yeah, this one is true, but it only drops bricks. It doesn't drop the pot. And just to be clear, you can break pots with every projectile not just arrows. Can you give a snow golem fire resistance? Alright, so we have our snow golem right here, and let's just splash him. And yeah, he has particles, but does this actually work? And yeah, the snowman is just swimming in lava and not dying. This is the weirdest thing I've seen. Does an evoker turn blue sheep red? Alright, so we have our blue sheep here. I don't really know why this one would work, but let's just spawn our evoker, and he's doing something. And the sheep actually turned red. What? Why doesn't this guy like blue sheep? Can you survive a 50 block fall with feather falling four boots? So let's just put feather falling on the boots, 
And now let's just fall down this 50 block platform. And no, I died. Apparently putting a pumpkin on your head stops Enderman from attacking you completely. So we have our Enderman right here. And let's just put a pumpkin on our head. And now let's fight the Enderman. Okay, yeah, he's hitting me. This one is definitely not true. The Enderman still attacks you when you have a pumpkin on your head. It's only good for looking at them. Apparently you need Silk Touch to mine a chiseled bookshelf. Okay, so we have a Silk Touch axe and a regular axe. Wait, it actually doesn't mine with the regular axe. And it mines with Silk Touch. Why is that a thing? I'm assuming that's a glitch because that's really weird. Can a sniffer egg float? Yeah, it can float. Is there something the sniffers are hiding from us? Wait, will the egg hatch in the air? Okay, yeah, it does. I'm sorry, Snifflet. I didn't know it would work. Can the new mobs go upside down? Okay, so we have a dinner bone name tag. And yeah, it works for a sniffer. And it also works for a camel. This looks so weird. Can you breed bees with the new pink petals? Yeah, you can. But the only reason this works is because they're a flower. Can you put a baby sniffer in a boat? So we already tried with a big sniffer and it didn't work. But yeah, it works on a baby sniffer. This is true. Wait, maybe you can grow the sniffer in the boat. No, never mind. It just gets teleported out. Another mob that can't fit in a boat is a camel. But yeah, it also fits in a boat as a baby, although the same thing happens when you grow it, unfortunately. Can you bounce off of a slime? So obviously you can bounce off a slime block like this, but does it work on a slime? No, it doesn't work, but I don't understand why. They are both made from slime balls. Does string make lava quiet? So I turned subtitles on, and right now you can see the lava sound is being made. So let's put some string on the top. And yeah, for some reason the lava sound is gone. That's so weird. Can you shoot through a bamboo trap door? No, you can't. The giant hole is in real I guess. What about a cherry trapdoor? Yeah, if the bamboo one didn't work, there's no way that one was working. Striking a villager with lightning makes it a witch. Yeah, this one is true, and it really makes me wonder what striking a person with lightning does. Do parrots dance when you play music? Yeah, wait, they're going crazy. Unfortunately, this doesn't work when they're on your shoulder, though. Does Frostwalker work on armor stands? So, let's just make this device real quick. And yeah, it turns all the water to ice. That's so cool. Oh, and I also just noticed that ice has a melting animation. I've never seen that before. For. Can you light two end portals at the same time? No, only one of the portals lights, but I don't really know when you would need this anyway. Can TNT boost an ender pearl? Okay, I don't think that's how you're supposed to do it. Yeah, I don't know if it made it go any further, but it definitely got boosted. Do frogs eat silverfish? No, it doesn't look like they eat these guys. This one is false. Can you hoe dirt on top of a chest to open it? So we have dirt, and we have a chest. And as you can see, it can't be opened. And yeah, hoeing the dirt makes it open. This one is true. Can piglins use a totem of undying? Here you go, man. Take the shiny object. I think it has to be a baby, because the big ones are already holding something. And yeah, it actually works. The baby survives with a totem. You can light a campfire by setting yourself on fire. All right, as you already know, don't try this at home. No, it doesn't work. I set myself on fire for nothing. Can you jump nine blocks with these three potions? So we have speed, slow falling, and jump boost. And yeah, it works. I jumped nine blocks. Apparently, mobs can't climb azalea leaves, so I am able to climb these leaves just fine. But yeah, the stupid zombies can't get in. This one is true. Apparently, two wardens can't kill a witch. So let's put a witch in a cage like this. And yeah, the wardens attack the witch, but it never dies because of its potions. It's true. Can you put powdered snow inside leaves? So everyone knows you can waterlog leaves like this, but what about powdered snow logging? No, you can't. It's false. Can a zombie piglin spawn riding a strider? So let's just spawn a bunch of striders. Yeah, it's true, and he even has a fishing rod thing to control him as well. Can you trap animals with trap doors? So if we put a bunch of trap doors like this, and then spawn some sheep inside, they shouldn't be able to escape. Yeah, they can't follow me. I guess we know why they're called trap doors now. Does reinforced deep slate protect you from the warden? Okay, so I already have darkness. This isn't looking good. Okay, yeah, he hit me. This one is not true. You can run underwater with mud. This one sounds stupid, but yeah, it's true. Allays drop items on note blocks. Okay, so so if we give him a diamond and then throw some diamonds over here, he should drop them on this note block. Yeah, it actually works. That's so cool. Can a dog survive a hit from the warden? So in order for this to work, I have to tame him. And yeah, it's true. The dog survives a hit. Can you make an iron golem underwater? No, you can't. What about a snow golem? Okay, yeah, the snow golem works, but I don't think he's making it out of the water. What about a wither? Yeah, this one is definitely not possible. I can't even place the heads. Do ocelots attack chickens? This one is kind of weird, but it's true. Oh, and they even sneak 
sneak up on the chickens when they are really far away. That's kind of cool. Apparently, a dog's tail shows how much health it has. So, as you can see, his tail is all the way up. Now, let's do some animal cruelty. And yeah, his tail is all the way back down. And you can even see that I healed him and his tail went back up. This is true. Can fish live in mangrove roots? Okay, that one didn't work. But yeah, it works when I click on the bottom. He's inside of the mangrove roots. Do pumpkin stems always face west? So, if I place one pumpkin down, it's kind of facing west. It's more northwest, though. And yeah, each one of the stems faces the same direction. This one is true. What about sunflowers? Do sunflowers always face the sun when you place them? So it looks like they're facing the sun right now, but let's try moving the sun. And no, they still face the same way. This one is false. Can you use eggs to break leads? Yes, you can, and this works with pretty much any projectile except for fishing rods. For some reason, they just do this. Apparently, bats don't drop XP. Alright, let's try to kill this guy with a bow. Wow, first try. Yeah, he didn't drop XP. This one is true. Can you kill blazes with water bottles? So I've heard of killing blazes with snowballs, but never water bottles. Yeah, it works, but it's gonna take a lot of water bottles to kill one of these guys. So a sword or an axe is a way better method. Can you use Frostwalker on a boat? Okay, so I have Frostwalker boots on. And no, this one isn't true. But why would you need a boat with Frostwalker anyway? Do llamas attack wolves? Okay, the wolf is literally sprinting away. And yeah, it's true. I didn't know llamas had any enemies. Except me, of course. Can you put a boat on top of your head? So let's just break this block. And yeah, I have a boat on top of my head now. Fashion has really been taken to new levels. Can you put armor on a villager? Yeah, he's taking way less damage now. This one is true. Does stained glass change the color of a warden's sonic boom? Okay, let's just provoke the warden again. No, this one isn't true. It's still blue. Do anvils bounce off slime blocks? All right, let's drop the anvil. No, they do not, unfortunately. Can a group of wardens blast away the ender dragon? All right, let's spawn a ton of wardens. Yeah, it's true, they sent him flying. Apparently, nether fences can't connect to other fences. So, if you have two types of wood fences, they'll connect like this. But when you place nether fences, it doesn't work. That's so strange. Apparently, you can't sleep while poisoned. Also, don't try this at home. No poisoning yourself. Yeah, this one is true. It just kicks me out of the bed. Can you shear a goat for a goat horn? I really doubt this works. It makes no sense. Yeah, you can't do this. You just gotta wait for them to ram into you. Can you escape phantoms by going underwater? Nope, it looks like these guys can swim as well. Well, if they weren't already annoying enough. I guess the only option to get rid of them is by sleeping. Do foxes get stuck in snow when chasing chickens? First, it's the ocelots killing chickens, and now it's foxes. Everybody hates these guys. But yeah, they get stuck in the snow for a second when chasing them. That's kind of funny. Apparently, gas can't swim. Okay, it's definitely not true. He is still chasing me underwater. Can you look at Enderman through glass? So this is me looking at an Enderman without glass. Not good. And this is me looking at one with glass. Yeah, he doesn't attack me anymore. It's true. Does does naming a Vindicator Johnny make him attack all mobs? This one is kind of strange. I don't know what Johnny did. But yeah, it's true. For some reason, he goes on a rampage. Can you stack two types of slabs? So apparently, if I put two slabs like this against the world border and then push them together, it will make a cursed slab. Yeah, it does. That's so weird. Do cats take no fall damage? I'm pretty sure this is a thing in real life, so it's probably true. Yeah, it's true. He just eats that fall. Will tadpoles follow you if you hold a slime ball? So we know that this works with frogs. And yeah, it also works with tadpoles. This one is true. Can a warden survive a max height fall? Yeah, it's true. He survived. I guess cats and wardens are the same thing. Do potions of healing hurt undead mobs? Yeah, it's true. And the opposite works as well. You can heal undead mobs with harming potions. Can you breathe underwater with torches? So everybody knows you can breathe underwater with doors like this. But what about torches? Okay, it kind of works, but the torches break, so it's not technically true. Can you bridge to the outer end islands? So obviously I could sit here and bridge like this, but that's boring. I'm just gonna fly instead. Yeah, it's true. You don't even need to kill the ender dragon to get here. Although it's probably faster, that was like a thousand blocks. Apparently camels can make a 12 block jump. Yeah, it's true. They need this guy in the NBA. But now let's see if a camel can protect you from the Ender Dragon. This is kind of a weird situation. How would a camel even get to the end? But yeah, it actually works, but it's not looking good for my camel. Are beehives more common in cherry grove biomes? Okay, there's literally three of them right here. It's definitely true. Does weakness stop you from being able to attack mobs? Okay, so I can still attack mobs when I have weakness, but when I punch the mobs, it doesn't work. So this one is kind of true. Apparently, you can't attack a camel's head. This one seems kind of weird. I'm sorry. 
sorry, Campbell, if this doesn't work. Oh, it's actually true. How is this possible? Can you put armor trims on an elytra? No, you cannot. What about armor trims on a turtle shell? You actually can, and this thing looks really cool. I'm definitely gonna start wearing turtle helmets. Can you breed camels with cactuses? All right, let's just feed them both some sharp objects. And yeah, somehow this one actually works. Do all camels run the same speed? So everyone knows that each horse moves at a different speed, but does this also work for camels? Okay, it's been 10 seconds and he made it here. Now it's time to try a different camel. Okay, it's the exact same speed. This one isn't true. Using the seed sniffer spawns you near a ruin with a sniffer egg in it. Okay, we got an ocean, but it's not a warm ocean. This one is false. Do hanging signs fit less text than a regular sign? So there's 60 characters on a regular sign, and there's only 40 characters on a hanging sign. This one is true. Is there a secret room in a desert well? No, it doesn't look like it. What about in a jungle temple? I mean, yeah, there is a hidden room, but it wasn't added in 1.20, so I'm gonna say this is false. Can you shoot projectiles through a nether portal? Okay, it doesn't seem to have gone through, but let's check. There's no way to really tell. We need a wall. And yeah, there's actually arrows on the other side. This one is true. Do piglins wear mob heads? There's no way this one is actually true. This looks so funny. Wait, what if you use a piglin head on a piglin? Okay, this one is really cursed. He has double ears. Powdered snow stops you from burning in the nether. Don't try this at home, guys. And yeah, it works, but you don't get to keep the snow. It's a one-time use. Wait, if it stops burning in the nether, you can probably clutch with it as well. Yeah, this one is true, and it also doesn't melt. Can you light a nether portal with a bed? This one is true, but it's just the explosion doing it, not the bed. Does a cursive binding book get stuck in a bookshelf? No, it doesn't. I can still take it out. Do jukeboxes emit particles when you play music? Yeah, this one is true. I've never seen this before. Can you die from dehydration in Minecraft? Obviously, there is no thirst meter in Minecraft, but apparently with this command, it will say you died of dehydration. Yeah, it's true. I guess I gotta start drinking some liquids. Can you make a giant cherry tree? Tree. Okay, it doesn't grow into one giant tree. And yeah, that doesn't really look that much bigger than normal either. Are emeralds more common in cherry biomes? I don't really know how to test this one, but I'm seeing some emeralds, so at least they do spawn in a cherry biome. I have no idea if they're more common here, though. Does a camel fit in a boat? No, it does not. This guy is way too big. What about a sniffer? A sniffer also doesn't fit in a boat. This is sad. He'll never be able to become a pirate. Apparently, there's a new way to get command blocks. So if you click on options and go to controls, you can enable operator items tab. And yeah, yeah, now when you're in creative, there's this new tab with all sorts of blocks you had to use slash give for before. Does a sniffer egg survive being hit by an anvil? So if you do this to turtle eggs, this is what happens. So I wonder if the same thing happens with sniffer eggs. Yeah, the sniffer egg somehow survives, that's insane, but the anvil doesn't drop this time. What about TNT? Okay, it's not that strong. RIP snifflets. Does waterlogging a skulk shrieker stop it from making noise? Yeah, it's not making noise. I wonder if this also stops the warden from spawning. No, it does not. Does killing an elder guardian drop an armor trim? Okay, nothing so far. And yeah, tied armor trim. These guys can also drop fish, which is kind of weird. I don't think they are fish. Is there a hidden gold block in the new trail ruin structure? Okay, so I definitely meant to do what just happened, and I don't really see any gold blocks here. I'm gonna say it's false. Do diamonds spawn under the middle of trail ruins? Okay, so this looks like the center. Let's dig down. There's no diamonds, it's false. Everyone knows you can name a sheep Jeb and it turns rainbow, but does this work for a sniffer? No, it doesn't. What about naming a camel? No, this one also doesn't work. I guess we're stuck with regular mobs. Can piglins open doors? Wait, they actually can, that's so cool. Can you break bamboo blocks faster with a sword? Okay, so this is with a fist and this is with a sword. I don't think it's any different. Apparently XP bottles can make a block of redstone or glow. Yeah, it's actually glowing and that's a lot of particles. You can also just do this by right clicking it though, the XP bottles don't really matter. Apparently, there is blue magma in Minecraft 1.20. Oh my god, there actually is. No way. It's definitely not fake. Do torch flowers emit light just like torches? Oh wait, I probably need to turn off Fulbright. No, it's still really dark in here. The torch doesn't mean anything. Can you use a brush on a dragon egg? So when you right-click a dragon egg, normally it teleports away. But what if you use a brush? No, it still teleports away. I guess you can't clean your dragon eggs. Can you put armor trims on horse armor? No, unfortunately, you can't give your horse some dragon. If you put a flower into a crafting space, it turns into a single color of dye, but apparently you can craft a pitcher plant into two dyes. Yeah, this is true. I guess the flower is just so big, it gives you two dyes instead. Is rain invisible through black glass? So this is what rain looks like through regular glass. You can still see it. And this is what it looks like with black glass. This one is true. I wonder if it also works on snow. Yeah, it does. Can you dye the highlighted part on the new decorated pot? No, it's still yellow. This one isn't true. Is there a new bamboo village in the jungle 
biome. Okay, so when I use slash locate, I'm not really seeing anything that would be a bamboo village. And I'm also not seeing anything in this jungle. This one is probably false. Can you smelt netherite armor and tools into netherite scraps? So everyone knows you can do this with gold and iron armor and tools, but it doesn't seem to be working with netherite armor or tools, so it's false. I don't see why you would ever need to do this anyways, so that's probably why. Can you dry a wet sponge using a campfire? Okay, so you can't place the sponge on the campfire, so this is already not looking good. Yeah, the steak is cooked and the sponge is still wet. I don't think it's true. Is there a new cherry dimension in 1.20? Yeah, I think it's kind of obvious that this one isn't true. Wait, never mind, guys. 100% real cherry dimension. Apparently, sniffers can't drown because their eggs come from the water. Okay, he's sniffing the water. Maybe this one is true. Never mind. This is definitely not true. I'm also not gonna help him out of the water. I'm a hater. You can plant mangrove trees underwater. So if you place a regular sapling here, it just breaks. But yeah, the mangrove propagule can be placed underwater. Are phantoms afraid of cats? So let's place a bunch of phantoms down, and now we'll get some cats. And yeah, the phantoms don't seem to be attacking me. Also, this noise is terrifying. What is that? Can you clutch on a sniffer? So these guys look kind of soft, so hopefully this works. Okay, it definitely doesn't work. This is false. Can you put horse armor on a camel? No, you can't. And even if you could, you wouldn't be able to use the saddle, so it would suck anyway. Are villagers able to sleep in the nether? Yeah, this one is true. These guys somehow don't make the bed explode. Whoops, I didn't think that would happen. Apparently, the warden isn't actually blind. So in spectator mode, you can see what any mob sees by left-clicking on it. And that includes the warden, who is definitely able to see from what I'm seeing. Apparently, you can't name a mob name tag. Yeah, so you can't even name a name tag name tag. But you can do it like this, so I guess it's false? Oh wait, I actually just found a way to do it, technically. Does a potion of luck change the loot inside a chest? So this is the loot in the chest right now, and now I have the luck effect. And it's the same loot in the chest. This is false. You can make a minecart that infinitely moves. So apparently if you stack a bunch of minecarts in each other, they will never stop moving. Yeah, this one is true, and it's also really weird. Why does this work? Apparently a camel can survive a 50 block fall. Sorry man, I gotta do this. It's actually true, it somehow lived, but now can I survive the fall while riding a camel? Okay, this one isn't true. The camel did not absorb my fall. Can a camel prevent you from being hit by mobs? This one is true. They're not hitting me. But I'm curious if this also works on the warden. Okay, it actually doesn't look like he can hit me. Wow, the warden's getting a little close. Naming your seed cherry blossom spawns you in a cherry blossom biome. It's true, but it's the smallest cherry blossom biome I've ever seen. Are all sheep pink in a cherry blossom biome? This one isn't true, but let's just pretend it is. It looks a lot better this way. Can you undye leather armor using a cold? Wow, this one is actually true. And you can also dye wool that has already died. This one is true as well, and you can do it with every colorable item, just to be clear. Apparently, you can swap your elytra out without opening your inventory. This one is true, but you better carry a water bucket with you just in case. Does a bamboo raft move faster than a regular boat? So this is me riding both of the boats. It doesn't look like the bamboo one is any faster. This is false. Can you clutch on a camel? You can clutch on a horse, so this should be possible. As long as I don't mess this up of course. And yes, you can do it. This makes up for him killing me earlier. You can die a camel's saddle. Nope, this one isn't true, but it would be cool if it was. Apparently, mobs can't jump over hanging signs. So I've placed a fence of hanging signs around me, and now let's see if all these zombies can get to me. Okay, they can. This one is definitely not true. If you place a hanging sign like this, apparently mobs can't follow you through it. And it's true. Who knew zombies were this stupid? The nether portal animation is fixed in 1.20. So this is what the animation used to look like, and now it's supposed to stop the animation from playing again when you go through. Yes, this one is true. Can a piglin head prevent you from being attacked by piglins? No, it can't. We've already seen this. They don't <laughs> accept me. What about if you wear armor with a gold trim on it? Nope, it appears I still have a five-star wanted level. What about if you wear gold armor with a trim on it? Okay, this one was obviously gonna work. They gotta respect a man with some drip. A piglin head flops its ears when it's powered by redstone. This one is true, and also kind of weird. Does this mean mobs are powered by redstone? Apparently, a dragon Dragon head can now open its mouth. This one is also true. I honestly have no idea if this one is new or not, though. I don't usually wear a dragon's head. There is a new Vex in Minecraft 1.20. So this is what an old Vex used to look like. Kind of scary if you ask me. And this is the new Vex. This one is true. It kind of looks like an evil Allay. Speaking of evil Allays, does the new Vex attack Allays? Okay, it doesn't really look like they attack each other. They're just chilling. Does a sniffer egg hatch faster on moss? So here's my egg on moss, and here's the regular egg. Now we just wait. 
And yeah, this one is true. The egg on moss hatched way faster. You can make a sniffer carpet. This is actually just from my build hacks video. It's not really a myth. No sniffers were harmed in the making of... No, actually they were. I'm not gonna lie. Can you ride a sniffer? So my right click says you can't, but this command says I can. But since you can't do it without cheats, I'm going to say it's false. You can heal camels with cactuses. I can't imagine this one is true because of what I'm seeing right now. Okay, never mind. He somehow eats that. That's true. You are able to sprint on camels. This one is true, but you might not notice it if you use toggle sprint since it just sprints by default. Can sniffers dig for seeds in the nether? He's sniffing the air. I wonder what he's got a hold of. Okay, just ignore that. I don't know how that got here. Yeah, this one is false. He isn't digging for anything. Apparently, there is a new built-in resource pack. Yes, there is high contrast mode, but all it really does is edit the UI and nothing else changes. Jukeboxes can emit a redstone signal. Let's just pick out some quality music here. Yep, this one is true, and I may have also summoned Harold. Brian. If you punch a decorated pot, it won't break. Yes, this one is true. It just drops the pot instead of the shards. And speaking of shards, can you copy them like an armor template? No, this one unfortunately isn't true. You're gonna have to find these manually. Are you able to craft a plain pot using just bricks? Okay, it's a good thing I'm bricked up for this myth. Yes, this one is true. I now have a lot of plain pots. Apparently, you can get the ward armor trim for killing the warden. Okay, this is taking way too long. I'm just using the command. No, he still drops the skulk thing, whatever it is. The new damage looks like bedrock. Yeah, this is true, unfortunately. I don't really like how this looks. Also, you can apparently change the amount of shake when you get hit. Okay, this one is also true, and this looks even weirder, honestly. It kind of looks like I'm in spectator. Can you get apples from a cherry wood tree? Okay, so far, this one isn't looking good. Yeah, I broke all the leaves on the tree and not a single apple. This one is false. Apparently, you can now edit signs. Okay, yeah, I already knew this one was true, and along with editing signs, you are also able to write on the back of them. And you can right-click them with a honeycomb, and it makes it so you can't edit them anymore. That one I actually didn't know. That's pretty interesting. Do chiseled bookshelves increase enchantment levels? Okay, so we have filled them all with books. Now let's see if it increases the levels. Nope, this one isn't true. Can you fill chiseled bookshelves using hoppers? Yes, you can do this, and apparently you can also put plants in pots using hoppers. Okay, I don't think it's true. There's a new cherry blossom villager variant. No, there isn't, which means there probably isn't a cherry blossom village either, but it would definitely be cool if they added one, because this biome is a little boring. Can you use silk touch to mine suspicious blocks? Okay, so we tried it on gravel and it didn't work, and it also doesn't work on sand. This is false. Apparently, there is a new potion of luck in Minecraft. There actually is a potion of luck. When applied, plus one luck. I don't really know what that means, but hopefully it doesn't turn me into a leprechaun. Can you transport pets on a camel? So I don't really know how you would do this, I'm assuming my dog would just get on the camel, and it isn't. So this one is false. Are you able to swim on a camel? Okay, it's kind of working, but he's sinking slowly, and yeah, it kicked me off. I want to say this one is false, but it's also kind of true, because he can swim for a second, so I don't know. If you put a mob head above a note block, it will play a sound from that mob. Yeah, this one is true, and it works for every mob, including the skeleton. That was definitely real. Another thing you can apparently do is optimize your world. Yeah, this one is true, but I don't really know what it does. I think it's supposed to be for older worlds, because it didn't really seem to do anything. Can a sniffer survive a hit from the warden? Okay, so we have our sniffer and our warden. We just gotta wait for this guy to find him. He's kind of blind. Okay, the sniffer died in one hit. This one isn't true. But what about a camel? Can a camel survive a warden? We just gotta wait for this again. Oh, and it actually worked. A camel can survive one hit from the warden. Camels really are just built different. Does spawning a cow in a cherry blossom biome make it a mulip? No, it does not. Is there a secret room in the desert temple? Yes, there actually is in the back corner, and this is what it looks like. Are there new potions in Minecraft? So the potions aren't new, but all the colors are changed, and I'm honestly not a fan of this. Like, why is night vision green? Who did this? You no longer have to spam place paintings. Yeah, all the paintings are now selectable by their variants, so now it's a lot easier to get which one you want. This isn't really a thing in survival though, so you're still stuck spam placing them if that's the case. Is the bundle in Minecraft 1.20? There is still no bundle in the creative inventory, but you can still give it to yourself with a command. I wonder when they will finally add this thing. Apparently hanging signs don't break when you break their supporting block. Yeah, this one is true. How is this even possible? This is definitely an illegal building technique. Apparently armor stands now have arms. Okay, so the logic behind this one is that it has arms in a smithing table. But no, the armor stand doesn't have arms. Does landing on a sniffer egg break it? 
No, either the sniffer egg is really strong or I'm not heavy enough. It's probably the first one. Can you ride a baby camel? No, you can't, unfortunately. But can you put chests on a camel? You also can't do this, but you'd think a mob this strong would be able to do that. Apparently, frogs follow you if you hold slime balls. Okay, so I don't think this one is 1.20 related, and I also can't even tell if it's true. Yeah, it's probably true. He seems to be following me. There is a new way to change your GUI scale. Apparently, if you hold control and scroll at the same time, it changes your GUI scale. Okay, so nothing is happening right now, but what if we try it in the options menu? Now it's working. Yeah, this one is true, but you're already in the options menu, so it's not really that cool. Apparently, harming potions ignore armor. So that did five and a half hearts. Now let's put armor on. Yeah, it did the same amount of damage. I guess armor is just useless. Apparently, you can trap and kill the warden with powdered snow. Alright, he's trapped. And it's working. He's dying. Okay, this is kind of sad. I'm gonna help him out. Apparently, you can repair an iron golem. Oh, I can't hurt this one. Sorry, bro. Wait, it actually repairs him. I almost certainly thought this one was fake. It sounds so stupid. Apparently, you can sleep underwater. Let's just make it night. Wait, how does this work? Bro, I'm amphibious or something, what? You can make a two block jump with a bubble column. I'm going higher, but it's not two blocks. Oh, you have to run at it for it to work. And it's actually pretty consistent when you have the timing. Hitting a mob through fire sets the mob on fire. Nope, pretty sure I would have known about this if it was true. You can shoot fire arrows through the bottom of a lava cauldron. Wait, it works. You just have to angle it right, this is sick. As you know, you can block a beacon by placing a block above it, but apparently the beacon's beam can go through bedrock. Here it is with stone, as you can see it blocks it. Now we'll try bedrock. What? I guess stone is stronger than bedrock now. That's so weird. Reinforced deep slate drops with silk touch. This is gonna take a while. I better not be getting trolled. We're almost there. And it did nothing. Nice. Apparently you can put thorns on an armor stand. So I have a full set of thorns 3 armor. Let's put it on the stand. No, I'm not taking any damage. I kind of wish this one was true though. It would be cool. Prismarine blocks change colors. All right, time to stare at a block. It actually looks like it's changing. I think this is true. Yeah, there's actually a huge difference between the two. Striders can protect you from baby zombies. Let's get on this guy and we'll go survival. Yeah, they can't hit me. I'm invincible. No baby zombie can ever kill me again. Apparently, you can light two portals inside of each other. Alright, we have a weird portal. Aw, oh, that would have been so cool. Mojang, please add this in 1.20. We need double portals. Mobs can't kill you in sugarcane. Let's put some zombies and a skeleton. Now I will set my game mode. I don't think it worked. This would be cool if it was true, though. You get more experience from fortune. So I have a default pickaxe and a fortune 3 pickaxe. No fortune gave me almost 10 levels. And I got less levels with fortune. This one isn't true. Spiders can climb the world border. Not too sure about this one. Oh wait, he's doing the thing. Spider climbing the world border. Where will he go? Actually, when will he stop? This is getting dangerous. Apparently, spiders also infinitely climb the world border. Apparently, you can ignite TNT with a fishing rod. Now we just fish through the lava. Yeah, it works. I guess there is a reason to fish in lava now. Apparently, you can also pull TNT towards you with the fishing rod. Yeah, it works. I have no idea why this would be useful, but it's cool. You can put a boat in a minecart. Wait, what? Why does that work? I'm pressing W and going backwards. This is so weird. Wait, what if I put a boat in a minecart in a minecart? No, oh, it doesn't work. Apparently, you can dodge Sonic Boom. Nope. Still no. Oh, you can. It's just hard because you have to do it really fast. Undead mobs don't burn underneath cobwebs. So I trapped a zombie and a skeleton in a hole. Let's set it to day. Wait, they're actually not burning. And as you can see, these guys are burning. This one is somehow true. This doesn't even make sense. Apparently, ghasts can't see you behind cobwebs. I'm trapping myself in cobwebs. I don't think it worked, guys. Oh, not the underwater bed. Apparently, rain kills snow golems. Flash weather rain... Wow, I've never seen something die so fast. Yeah, this one's true. You can kill the ender dragon with snowballs. I can't tell if I'm missing or if it doesn't work. Yeah, I don't think it's working. It's weird though, because they aren't even hitting the dragon. Coal blocks last longer than nine coal in a furnace. Time for some waiting. Nine coal finished first. I guess it's actually worth it to craft coal blocks. Holding control while using pig block gives you a chest with the same items. Now we have a ton of useful loot in this chest. 
and we just hold control. Yeah, it actually works. Awkward splash potions stop fire damage. Don't try this at home, guys. Nope, I'm still on fire. You can't spawn a wither in a snow biome. This one is true. I have no idea why, but it does work. Apparently, you can MLG into a cauldron. Okay, I gotta line myself up perfectly. Nope, that's unfortunate. Apparently, if you hold crouch, you can MLG on leaves in 1.19. Alright, I'm holding crouch. Nope, it still waterlogs it. Can you burn waterlogged leaves? It won't let me set them on fire. Yeah, it doesn't look like they can burn. Apparently, polar bears attack foxes. I think it's true, but he's gonna have to catch him. I don't think the polar bear is fast enough. Alright, I'm gonna cut the video before the fox gets hurt. Oh. Apparently, you can give a boat a name tag. Let's name it something cool and original. Oh yeah, I have to crouch. It's not working. Maybe we have to name the boat. Guys, please just do it. No, it still won't work. It's just a boat. Apparently, deep slay ores give more XP. Okay, we got 8.5 levels from regular. And we got 9 levels from deep slate. Since the amount of XP you get is random, I don't think this is a big enough difference for it to be true. You can fish in a cauldron. Whoops. Yeah, there's no way I'm fishing anything out of here. You can't fish in a cauldron, but can you put fish in a cauldron? Nope, it just goes on top. Although sometimes the fish will go in the cauldron for a second. Killing a wither skeleton with a charged creeper always drops a skull. Oh, we gotta be quick here. There's one. There's two. There's three. Either my luck is insane or this one is true. You can smelt nether gold into a gold ingot. Wait, it's smelting. Yeah, it works. I guess this should have been obvious, but you do only get a few nuggets from breaking it, so I wasn't sure. Apparently, you can clutch with a skulk vein. Ow. No, you can't. Hostile mobs do not spawn in mushroom biomes. It's nighttime, and I don't see anything spawning. Alright, there would definitely be mobs by now. This one is true. Apparently, you can't milk a mushroom cow. Nope, you still can. And you can also milk them for soup. You can make a car in Minecraft. So if I put a pig in a minecart, it's supposed to be like a car. Well, I can only move backwards, and I move very slowly. But I guess it's a car? Just like you can break an end portal frame, you can break bedrock with a giant mushroom. Nope, the bedrock is still there. I wonder why it works with end portal frames and not bedrock. Apparently, bees can pollinate nether wart. No, it doesn't look like it. If you give a wither skeleton a bow, it will shoot fire arrows. So if I type this crazy command, I get a wither skeleton with a bow. And yeah, it's shooting fire arrows. That's terrifying. You can use gold nuggets as fuel in a furnace. No, you can't. I think you can in bedrock, though. Apparently, if you give a fox frostwalker boots, it will turn water to ice. We just need him to touch water. Nope, it doesn't work. I'm gonna need these back. Apparently, you can't lose hunger on a boat. Okay, I'm giving myself hunger 200. It doesn't appear to be working. But if I don't have the hunger effect, it seems to be true. Apparently, there's an infinite flower glitch. Yo, we're printing money. Wolves hunt down skeletons. So if I put this skeleton in a box... No, get out of here. So if I put a skeleton out of sight, apparently a wolf will hunt for it. I don't think it's working. Maybe it has to be my dog? Nah, he's just vibing. If you put a Jeb underscore name tag on a dog, apparently its collar becomes rainbow. So this should happen just with the collar instead. No, it didn't work. It just names your dog Jeb. Apparently, Endermen are not able to teleport out of a two-block hole. Alright, he's in a two-block hole. Nope, that happened instantly. The Warden's Sonic Boom ability apparently ignores armor. Here's me using no armor. Okay, it did two and a half hearts. Here's me with full nether right now. Wait, it did three hearts. It did more damage. What? Okay, apparently you also can't block Sonic Boom with a shield. What? No way, as if the Warden wasn't already powerful enough. Does mud dry out in the nether? No, it does not. Well, at least not instantly. Can mud be used to put out fire damage? Time to set myself on fire. Don't try this at home. Nope, I'm still on fire. Apparently 1.19 added jungle villages. Okay, I'm using slash locate, and these are the only village types available. There are no jungle villages. There aren't jungle villages, but apparently there are jungle villagers. Wait, no way, that's so sick. Apparently there are also swamp villagers. What? No way, it's like a non-mean looking witch. Why are these in the game with no villages? You can use reinforced deep slate to trap the wither. Now we spawn the wither. Will it get out? No, it seems to be stuck. Even in survival, it won't come get me. But I guess this would only be useful if you could mine reinforced deep slate, but it's still cool. If you place your own shrieker, it can't spawn a warden. So I've placed my own shrieker. 
And yeah, it's been three times, and nothing has happened. This one is true. Apparently, there is a new portal in the deep dark. Let's light this. Wait, what? Okay, obviously I'm joking. This is a texture pack. Apparently, you can heal Vexes into LAs by giving them milk. Alright, I'm giving him milk and nothing is happening. This one is fake. Can you use goat horns to call goats over to you? Eh, he's looking at me. No, it does not work. He's not coming over here. Do you need silk touch to mine a skulk sensor? Alright, nothing dropped with no silk touch. And it drops with silk touch. This one is true. Okay, I found out I'm supposed to use a hoe and not a pickaxe. I don't want to hear it. You can now place water inside of leaves. So just like a sign or a slab, I should be able to do this on leaves. Yes, it works, and it doesn't even flow out either. That's so cool. Swift Sneak makes dive mining faster. So that was me mining without Swift Sneak. And yeah, I mean, I move faster, but it doesn't make me mine any faster. So I would say this one isn't true. If you spawn a frog in a jungle, it becomes a poisonous frog. All right, here's the smallest jungle ever. Spawning a frog. Nope, it does not seem to be poisonous. Apparently, LAs can mine diamonds for you. So if I give an LA diamond ore, it's supposed to mine diamonds for me. Nope, this obviously wasn't going to work. But it can collect diamonds for you. If you listen to the new music disc in the deep dark, it spawns Herobrine. Okay, we have our jukebox and the music disc. Let's see. I don't really see anything around here. Oh my god! There's nothing. Herobrine was removed a long time ago, guys. Right? The new music disc can be used to light the portal in the deep dark. Nope, nothing is happening. And this disc is scary, I'm turning it off. You can't spawn a warden on the surface. Well, since you can't spawn a warden using your own shrieker, it's impossible for one to spawn on the surface. Frogs will eat magma cubes and drop a frog light. Oh, this one's true. Not these guys though, they're too big. Apparently you can find skeleton skulls in an ancient city. Dang, I really thought one would be here. Oh, there's one over here. It's true. Blowing up ores now gives you experience. I think I used too much TNT. Let's try just one. And it works, the XP dropped. Furnace minecarts now work like regular furnace blocks. Alright, I'm right clicking it and nothing is happening. Let's try it with food in my hand. Still nothing, this one doesn't work. Apparently tadpoles are scared of axolotls. Wow, the axolotl's going crazy. It doesn't look like the tadpole is afraid though. The warden is lava proof apparently. It's true. The warden is even more powerful than I thought. You can use water to silence skulk sensors. Yeah, it's making no noise, but there's still the pulse thingy. And as you can see, the redstone works, but it's making no sound. Apparently, the moo bloom was added in 1.19. Oh, guys, look, it's the moo bloom. No way, no way. Apparently, mobs now spawn inside of nether portals. So I've built a portal on the nether roof, so they should have the best chance of spawning here. Okay, this one might be true, but it's going to take forever if it is. Can Alays use a totem of undying? We'll just put some lava. Nope, we'll put some lava. Wow, this guy's fast. Okay, we finally got him. And it worked, he used the totem to survive, that's crazy. You can place structures with the command in 1.19. Alright, slash structure doesn't work. Okay, it's slash place structure, and yeah, you can place any structure just like this. Just like this. Now you can beat the game in super flat. There are new secret paintings in 1.19. So you just do this command, and this should be a new painting. Yeah, it works. There are also three other new paintings you can get with this command. Apparently you sink in mud just like powdered snow. I don't appear to be sinking. It does lower you by like 0.1 of a block though. Using Riptide on a trident while riding a boat makes you go faster. Alright, let's get in a boat. Nope, I can't even use a trident in a boat. It doesn't even let me right click. The fletching table can now be used to make tipped arrows. Alright, I'm right clicking on it and nothing is happening. Let's try it in survival. Still nothing. Even with an arrow, it still doesn't work. This one isn't true. Apparently tropical fish spawn in mangrove swamps. I'm kind of lost in here. This biome is so cool. Oh wait, those are tropical fish, right? Yep, so it's true. Minecraft now apparently has directional audio. So you go to music and sounds, and yeah, there's directional audio. And as you can see, it works. Well, as you can hear, it works. Also, I'm not sure if you can hear it properly on the video, but I am confirming it works. Can you distract the warden with XP bottles? He does seem to be distracted by them, but it doesn't seem to work in survival. You can name locations with a banner. So you just name the banner, and then you right click with a map. That didn't work. Oh, so it has to be an existing map. Yeah, that's really cool, actually. Apparently, you can put a chest in a boat now. So if I right-click this boat, nothing happens, but you can craft it. Now I have a chest on my boat, that's sick. You can find diamond armor in the ancient city. Nope. Nothing. There's iron armor. Still nothing. There it is, diamond leggings. Curse of binding, but it's still diamond. Oh, hello, warden. Apparently, you can spawn fireflies with a command. 
I am using slash summon and there are no fireflies. There is a game rule to disable the warden. There actually is a command for it. And as you can see, no warden spawns. This is really cool. Well, if you're a baby. I mean, I would probably use it though. Apparently, baby pandas can sneeze out a slime ball. We've got 1 million pandas here. I'm hearing them sneeze, but no slime balls. Okay, so apparently I have to spawn lazy pandas. Yeah, I've been waiting for a while and there are still no slime balls, so I don't know. You can use a book to spawn infinite dimensions. So all I have to do is throw the book in here. Nope, we're still in the nether. Okay, so this was actually from an April Fool's snapshot. I'm stupid. There's a secret redstone room under the ancient city. There is one. Okay, I already knew this, but maybe some people didn't, so here you go. Perfect place to get random redstone stuff. Apparently vines and glow lichen can be placed on soul sand. And it looks like you can. I have no idea why you couldn't do this before 1.19. Apparently walking on wool makes the skulk sensor not hear you. Yes, yeah, so this is one of the main features of the skulk sensor, and as you can see it is true. Apparently there are alligators in 1.19. Of course there are alligators in 1.19, that's one of the main features. Apparently mangrove trees don't have saplings. Mangrove trees do not have saplings. You have to use these weird propagil things to grow them instead. Apparently the bundle has been added to 1.19, so there is no bundle in the creative menu, but I can give it to myself, but since there is still no way to obtain it, I would say this is false. Apparently minecarts with an attached block now stay together when you break them. Oh, it's actually true. I'm pretty sure this never used to exist, that's cool. Apparently you can use cheats in survival without enabling them. So as you saw, I made a world with cheats off. Yeah, it does nothing. I don't know why this would work. Apparently there's an advancement for killing a mob near a skulk catalyst. Let's just kill this guy quickly. Yeah, it spreads as the advancement. Apparently there's also an advancement for having every frog light in your inventory. Yep, there's also an advancement for that. Apparently the end portal frame texture is now different. Alright, you guys tell me if you can see the difference. I'm sick of all these new Minecraft updates. Like, what even is a loom? When did they add this? They added it almost 7 years ago, what am I doing? So, for the next 100 days, I'm going to be playing Minecraft Alpha, one of Minecraft's oldest versions. Also, my game updates every 5 days, that's probably pretty important. On day 1, I did the regular Minecraft stuff. I cut down a tree, got some stone tools, and then I punch sheared some sheep and made a full set of wool armor. Just a normal first day in Minecraft. You might have noticed there are a lot of things you can't do in this version, like sprinting, crouching, dragging items, F5. Well, you can F5, but it kind of looks like this. But there are obviously some things that you can do, like building an epic house, collecting every block, and finding the rarest item. That's the stuff I'm gonna do. But right now, we're just going to find a place to build a house so I don't get murdered by mobs. I found the perfect place to build my house, and I built a giant pillar into the sky to mark the area, but then there was a problem. I... I don't know how to get down from here. I decided to do a ladder MLG and I obviously landed it, no question there. I replenished my health bar and cut down a few trees in the area, and then I started digging out an area to build the most epic house in Minecraft. Okay, the roof's still kinda missing, it's work in progress. For the rest of the day I searched for coal, and I just couldn't find it. So my only source of light for the night was just this furnace. Yo, who let him cook? On day 2 I found out you can make smooth stone slabs from cobblestone, and then I added a roof to my house. Hardcore YouTubers be like. I'm just kidding, this is the house. It looks a lot... better? Don't worry, this is only like 1% of what it will be at the end of the video. I managed to get some coal, so I lit up my house with some torches, and then I built a floor out of stone slabs. I also made a chest to store my blocks because I'm collecting every block. This is what we have so far. Not very much. After that, it was getting dark, so I figured it was time to go caving. I basically got a 5-star wanted level the second I stepped foot in a cave. There's also no audio in this version, so things like this creeper trying to exterminate my bloodline are very common. So, within less than 10 minutes, I was walking back up to the surface on 4.5 hearts with no food. It looks like caving in this version might actually be hard, but that's okay, because I like things that are hard. What do you mean by that? On day 3, I was supposed to look for food, but instead I started mining some sand because I need it for every block. I'm sorry about that edit guys, I have a sand addiction. After the sand it was pig murder time, and then I cooked some pig and some glass. Oh yeah, I also never mentioned that cooking pigs gives you steak in this version. Kinda weird. I spam hoed some grass to get some seeds, and then I planted a little farm on the side of my house. Not the other half though, I don't deserve that yet. After that I added some windows to my house and put a little pathway in front, and then the house was actually looking kinda drippy. Confidence is what you need to go caving in this version, and also a large amount of meat. So since I I have one of those, I think it's time to go caving again.
Okay, I managed to mine a lot of iron as you can see, but what I'm mainly looking for is some diamonds. I need 10 to collect every block, and I also want to get max drip at some point in this video, but right now we only have zero. I do have full iron though. For the rest of the day, I just kept caving. Yeah, that basically summarized my caving experience. On day 5, I decided the cave life was not for me, and it was time to strip mine. I found a weird glitch that almost killed me, but other than that, I found nothing. I heard 90% of miners quit before hitting it big, and I joined the 90%, making my way back up to surface. For the rest of the day, I did some stuff like mining more coal, lighting up the entire area around my base, and making a hole to collect some passive mobs to breed. Does my hole look good? Yes or no? Then I just continued making the front of my house better, and I watched the sunrise cinematically. Day 6 is Secret Friday. That's what they used to call the updates. Also, it's not a secret. It came out 13 years ago. In this update, they added snow and ice to the world generation, and I need snow for every block, so I went on a journey to look for it. The information I lacked at this time, though, was that you need a world that was in winter mode to find these two blocks. So basically, I was just completely wasting my time. I'm pretty sure there aren't any biomes in the game yet, so everything just kinda looks the same. But even if everything looks the same, there's still something about it that looks so good. It's probably the fact that everything has thumbnail level saturation on it. On day 7, I made my way back to my base. I tried to lure some sheep into the hole I made, but then I realized that you can't do that in alpha. You also can't breed mobs. I don't know why I didn't think of that. I spent most of the day upgrading the front of my base even more, and then it was back to the caves. Again. Why are there so many animals in the cave? I found nothing really while caving, just the coal and iron like usual, and then I got jump scared by a creeper. Since diamonds don't seem to be an option right now, I decided to just work on my house on day 8. And for this next build, we are going to need a lot of wood. So I started a mass deforestation, I was cutting down every tree within a 1000 mile radius. But don't worry, for every tree I broke, I was planting them back. Alright, now that we have all this wood, I honestly don't remember what I was going to do with it. Oh yeah, I was making a mine shaft, that's what I was doing with the wood. Mining mine. That's a pretty sick name. Next, I replaced some stone with cobblestone and gravel to make the mine look a bit nicer. And by the end of day 9, I was finished the shaft, and then it was Secret Friday. It's still not a secret, I'm reading a list of everything added right now. This list includes boats, cactuses, clay, reeds, bricks, slimes, bookshelves, and your mom. Haha, <laughs> get it? I'm sorry. But that isn't all the updates, and the last update is a very controversial one. The Goofy F5 has been removed, and it has been replaced with Fortnite F5 instead. I'm pretty much finished upgrading my base for now, so I think I'm going to hunt for some of the new blocks because I'm still missing a lot of them. So I guess it's time for us to hit the water. I don't think that's what that means. Okay, we found some cows. That's not really a block, but it is new. Something about these cows just does not look right. For the rest of the day, I kept searching for the new blocks. First, I found some reeds, and then I found some clay right after, and finally I found a stray cactus in the open. Not really sure if cactuses belong here. At the end of the day, I made my way back to my base and crafted every block that I had resources for. Okay, we're only actually missing 19 blocks. The only problem is some of them aren't even in the game yet. On day 11, I made a gold block and an iron block. Kind of forgot the texture used to look like this. And I also crafted some bricks. I used to love bricks when I was younger. Okay, that sounded kind of sus. I planted a cactus and made a sugarcane farm, and then I crafted a block of TNT. Alright, now there's only 15 blocks left, and most of them are in the caves, so it's time to go back. You might have thought the mobs were bad the first few times I went caving, but the last update on day 10 added something that I was not ready for. They're literally hitting me through the walls. Apparently, Alpha V1.0.11 is the slime apocalypse update, so instead of dealing with that, I decided to strip mine the rest of the day. I found nothing. On day 12, I got tired of stripping, I mean strip mining, so I decided to take on the slimes. I almost died immediately. Everything was okay though, because I actually found a method to exterminate the slimes. I continued exploring the caves, and I was actually feeling pretty confident, despite having one armor bar and an infinite amount of slimes attacking me. Eventually, this confidence got the best of me though, because I died to slimes. Okay, technically I didn't die to slimes, I accidentally lavaed myself, and I don't really know which one 
of those is more embarrassing. All I do know is I only have five minutes to get my items back. Oh no, guys, this is really intense. I wonder if he will get his stuff back. These stakes are insane. I got my stuff back. I'm honestly not sure how it didn't burn, though. For the rest of the day, I continued exploring, and I still found nothing. So I went back up to surface so I could at least craft some of the blocks I'm missing. I crafted some rails and an iron door, which puts me two blocks closer to collecting every block. I also forgot to save an iron ore to put in the chest, so we're still missing one of the easiest blocks. On day 14, I wanted to stop my crops from being trampled, so I remade my farm. There are no fences in the game yet, so this will have to do. I also crafted a bookshelf, which was another block that I'm missing, and then I captured a sheep. I think it's about that time in the video where the YouTuber gives the mob a name. That's his name. That's what I'm naming him. After naming my new pet sheep, it was time to go caving for the 400th time. I'm going to save you the details on this one. Getting annoyed by slime check. Strip mining time, check. Diamonds, check. Wait, that's out of the ordinary. It was only three diamonds, so I decided to make a pickaxe, and because of this pickaxe, I was able to mine some obsidian. Another block for the list of blocks. Bro, can this guy just shut up already? I also found diamonds again, and then I went back up to surface because it was time for Secret Friday. It's still not Friday. This update added chickens and music discs, but none of those are important. What is important is the jukebox, because we need it for the blocks. Yeah. I made an irresponsible decision and wasted one of my two diamonds on the jukebox, but I mean it's progression, right? I'm sure I won't regret this in the future. This update is also supposed to fix the slime problem. I hope that is true. I decided to go find a chicken for some reason. I don't know why. It's not like I've never seen one before. And after finding a chicken, I came back to my base to find my sheep was dead, so I made a grave for it. Okay, it probably just despawned. There's nothing that would kill it in this game except me. It wasn't me, I swear. On day 16, I found that slimes are definitely definitely not fixed. I hit the strip mines again, and in my notes it says not sure if I found diamonds, too lazy to check. I'm not checking. I'm just kidding, I actually did check and I found three veins of diamonds in the same strip mine. I don't know how I went from zero diamonds to this. On day 17, I crafted the coveted diamond block, and this was huge because every block that required diamonds was now found. Now we only need to get full diamond armor. On the next day I found some diamonds, and then I found more, and after a little bit of mining I found another big cave, this time with no slimes. I must have won the Minecraft lottery or something because I found two more diamond veins back to back. And on day 19, I headed back up to surface feeling like I had just robbed somebody's tomb. I figured that I had done enough caving for now, so I went around harvesting my farms and smelted some iron. I also decided to make middle pieces, and now I was halfway to full diamond, so that's pretty sick. For some reason, this armor also had me feeling crazy, so I went out at night to fight some mobs. It feels like I'm playing Fortnite right now. Oh no, I think someone died here. I spent the rest of the day watching the sunrise and then it was day 20. Okay, things are getting serious now because this is actually the update where Harrowbrine was first spotted. Hopefully we don't run into him. Fences and spider jockeys were also added in this update, but most importantly, they finally fixed F5. No more goofy running and no more Fortnite. I made some fences to replace the bootleg fences I had on my farm, and for some reason they just don't connect to blocks. After that, I noticed my cactus farm was getting kind of crazy, so I figured it was time to transform the space a little bit more. I have a plan to build something huge on top of this mountain, but for now, let's start making this area around it look a little bit nicer. Wait, that chicken is crazy with it. From days 21 to 24, I was just building. I made a big pathway going to the bottom of the hill, and then I built a new cactus farm. I also made a bunch of these walls out of wood and cobblestone, and then I tried to place some stairs. Yeah, apparently you can't do that in this version. I added a few more details to the walls, and then I added a layer of oak planks on the outside of the farm. As it was getting dark, I finished the perimeter, and I was able to take a look at my progress while waiting for the sun to rise. The lighting makes it look awful, but I'm actually happy with how it turned out so far. The house on the top has to go though, and it will in the future. On day 25, I was tired of building, but luckily it was Secret Friday and the compass was added. Yay! At the beginning of this video, I told you I was going to find the rarest item, and I never told you what it is. I mean, you could probably tell what it is, but if you can't for some reason, it's a golden apple. Now that we have a compass, I can go search for some spawners, which is the only place you can get it. We also need mossy cobblestone from a spawner for the blocks, so I'm going to go look for one of those. I found nothing on day 25, and on day 26, I was still searching for a spawner. The only difference is, this time I actually found it. Why is there no mob in the middle? It's just a spawner spawner. I looted the chest and found nothing. I decided to mine all the mossy cobblestone in case I need it for a future build, and then I continued my search. I found a cave, so I explored that, and I also found some diamonds, and on day 27, I found more diamonds. I also found more diamonds again, and after finding those diamonds, I was able to 
to make full diamond, so now we've officially completed one of our goals. Well, it wasn't an official goal, but it still makes me feel good, so it counts. On day 28, I found a new cave. There was nothing in it. So, I found another new cave. There was nothing in it as well. So, I went and found another cave. There's still nothing in any of these caves. I'm starting to understand why the golden apple is the rarest item. On cave number 4, I was able to find some more diamonds. I found like 4 veins in a matter of seconds, and it honestly looked like I did some mining off camera. I decided to make all the diamond tools, including the hoe, because I was ballin' like that. It's nether portals with the corner blocks from here on. On day 29, I actually found another spawner, but all it had was nothing again, so I decided to go back to my base. Day 30 is Secret Friday, and you might have noticed that sound was added. This update also brought us crouching and the ability to change your sensitivity, so this is a pretty W update. Oh yeah, and there are also fishing rods. They are completely useless and you can stack them, that's it. I have these objectives I need to complete, and one of these goals is to build an epic house. No offense to the house we have right now, but it's just not epic. I know I said I was going to put something better on the top of the mountain, but right now we are not doing that. Instead, we are going to build it right here, so let's start terraforming. Okay, this area is looking pretty good, so now it's time to build the house. For some reason, when I was younger, I was obsessed with these modern houses, so I'm going to be building one of those. I started to lay out a foundation for the house, starting with the pillars, and I ran out of stone pretty quickly, so I went and killed some pigs. I don't think those two are related. And then I started adding some stone slabs on the outside. So if you can't tell by now, this build is going to take a lot of stone. On day 32, would you have guessed that I started the day by mining stone? I finished the bottom layer, so I started building the pillars up even higher. After that, I filled the entire floor with wood planks except for the front section because that's going to be a garage. Why do I need a garage in my Minecraft house? I, I don't know. Why do you not subscribe yet? I also have to place 1 million torches on this build or we will get some unwanted visitors. The pigs are fine. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about these guys. Day 33 was slightly different because instead of mining stone, I cut down a bunch of trees. I also filled in the rest of the first floor and moved on to filling in the second floor. And at the end of the day, I smelted even more stone and then I started on the roof. The roof is interesting because it's going to take me 10 times more slabs than the rest of the house. On day 34, I finished about two layers of the roof before it was stone mining time, again. But first, let's take a look at the house. This is how the house looks right now. I think it's missing something. Today, I had a method. I cut some trees before before the sun went down, and then I spent the rest of the day mining cobblestone while it was dark outside. I was also killing both birds with one stone by strip mining to try to find diamonds. It was almost a bad idea though because, well, you can see on the video. I apologize to any blind viewers, I just landed a sick MLG and trick shot. the lava sounds were photoshopped. Day 35 is a crazy day. It's secret Saturday. Yeah, for some reason they dropped the update on a Saturday this time. Not for me though, it's not Saturday. This update added the nether, pumpkins, the clock fishing. Oh yeah, and the game looks completely different. This was the first update with biomes, which means different color foliage, like the grass and stuff. It also means we can finally get snow. I made a clock for some reason, and then I went down to get obsidian to visit the nether. I didn't really want to go to the nether in this version because it's kind of useless, but if you already forgot, I'm collecting every block, and there are three new blocks in the nether. Also, I lied on day 28. We're not building a portal with the corners. I collected some soul sand and some netherrack, and then I collected glowstone, which is super annoying because because it only drops one dust in this version, and you need nine of them to craft the block instead of four. I got everything I needed from the nether, so I went back and added the three blocks to the chest. Now we just need to get a pumpkin and a snow block. I ended up finding snow pretty quickly, which was cool, but you might have noticed that my house has no walls, and that is because the walls are supposed to be made out of snow. So this little amount of snow up here, it's not going to cut it. We need a snow biome. I continued searching for snow, and I found a pumpkin on my way there. I also found an area that had every single biome, like, basically connected, including a snow biome. So, I started mining snow. And I mined snow. Yeah, I mined snow for the rest of this day, slowly filling my inventory with snow blocks. Even when it got dark, I was out there grinding. I was also getting harassed by spiders. After another almost full day of shoveling, I felt like it was time to go back. So, on day 38, I made my way back home and added the new blocks to the chest. Oh yeah, I also had to craft 
craft a jack-o'-lantern, apparently those existed in alpha. After adding the blocks to the chest, I had officially collected every obtainable block, and now I just need to put them somewhere to display my greatness. But first, we still have to finish the house we were working on. I finished the walls, and then I got attacked by some zombies. They're just jealous of these dirt stairs. For the rest of the day, I worked on finishing the roof, and I also added some doors to the house. Hopefully, that will keep the zombies out. On the next day, it was update day, but unfortunately, this update added nothing important. As you can see, the house is looking pretty good so far, but it still needs some windows. This is me mining the sand that is going to be used to make those windows. This time, I don't have a sand addiction. I started placing some of the windows, and then more of these guys showed up. I swear the second one just spawned out of thin air. These guys are out to ruin my house. On day 41, I mined sand again, and I finished the first floor windows. The next day, I finally finished the roof, and I used the extra stone I had to put an outline around the house for some extra detail. I also got more glass, so I added some glass on the edge of this balcony, and I finished the windows on the second floor. I also added some stairs up to the second floor, and I added some stone railings on the side. The stone looks really bad, I'm actually going to remove it. On day 43, I took another look at the house. It's honestly looking pretty good at this point. At this point, I could say I was finished with the exterior, and it was time to move on to the interior. I built a wall to create a little room at the back of the house, and then I started moving some of my stuff to a storage area. I also started to replace the garage floor with gravel as a kind of a road. I don't know, there aren't many blocks in this version. The next day, I cut down some wood, mined some gravel, expanded the road out a bit, and terraformed the lake in front so at least the road doesn't go into the water. Eventually, the road just ends though, and that makes no sense, but I don't care. Day 45 is update day, and this update added only one thing, portals. Well, they were already in the game, but now you can kind of just place them. I got distracted and spammed portals everywhere, which probably isn't a good idea because I can't really break them, it takes forever. After that, I built a little fishing dock on the lake, and then I took a look at my progress. It's looking pretty sick. I added some stuff like this couch made out of a very comfortable material, this table, and this epic water feature. On day 46, I went back to the nether to get glowstone, and the gas wouldn't leave me alone. I also don't know why I got glowstone. I don't remember using it in this build at all. I added some paintings around the house like this one, which costed me $1 billion at an auction. That's why I have two of them right beside each other. I also found some evidence of me placing the glowstone, so I guess I did use it. Next, I put some flowers outside of the house, and since there are no beds in this version, I decided to make my own bed out of my favorite sleeping material, gold blocks. A full gold bed is a crazy flex. I also wanted to add a motivational quote to the wall. Something like, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, or opportunities don't happen, you create them. Let's get this bread. On day 48, I was pretty much finished the house, but I'm still missing a garage door, and unfortunately, Home Depot doesn't exist in this version, so I have to get the stuff to build that. I wanted to make the garage door out of iron blocks, so I decided to spend the next few days caving, mainly to get a bunch of iron, but also to try to find a golden apple, because we still need that. So, on day 49, I did some caving, and on day 50, I did some caving as well. This was also update day, and all it really added was coordinates, and on day 51, I was still caving, and from days 52 to 54, I caved. Now, did I find a golden apple in that time? Well, let's see. During that time, I found four spawners, and none of them had a golden apple. But I did find enough iron to finish my garage door. After that, I stared at my completed house until the sun rose, and it became day 55. It's Secret Friday, but this update added nothing. And that's kind of what there is to do today. Nothing. I obviously still need to find a golden apple, but I'm not spending the rest of the 100 days doing that. That would be boring. Instead, I think it's finally time to do something about the old boring house on top of this mountain. Okay, so basically I want to build a castle slash museum for all the blocks I collected earlier in the video, but in order to make this castle, and yes, it will literally be this castle. This is my inspiration. I need to make this hill a lot bigger. So, I spent the rest of the day forming the terra, and on day 56, that's also what I did. On day 57, I continued filling in the mountain, but I ran out of dirt, so I mined dirt for the rest of the day. And on the next day, I finished filling in the top of the mountain, but obviously the sides need to be filled too, so I started filling the sides as well. This is so fun. Man, I love filling things. I managed to fill the left side, which was the smallest, and now you can see it actually looks pretty cool. Well, it looks like a normal mountain, but that was the goal. I also finished the back side, so on day 59, it was time to start working on the big side. This side is huge, so it's probably going to take a while. I pretty much immediately fell off the side and blew a creeper, and then I went and mined more dirt because I ran out. Running out of dirt in Minecraft twice is crazy. I got griefed by skeletons while filling in the wall, and on day 60, I was finally finished filling the wall. 
world. It may not seem like it took that long because of editing, but it literally took me five days to make that mountain. Five Minecraft days, just to be clear. Also, today was update day, but it still adds nothing. There were no good updates after the nether one. On day 61, I'm putting a picture of the castle on the screen again to remind you. The materials to make this castle basically don't exist, so we're going to improvise on the materials I use. If improvise means come up with a stupid idea of using clay and bricks, then I guess I improvised. Let me tell you why this was a stupid idea while well, footage from four whole Minecraft days plays in the background. Basically, clay is very rare. That's it. That's why it was dumb. After returning to my base on day 64, I only had 14 stacks of clay. Yeah, that definitely won't be enough to make this castle. Day 65 was the last update of Minecraft Alpha, and you guessed it. It added flying pigs. No, it actually added nothing again. Now that I had the materials for the castle, or at least I thought I did, I decided it was finally time to remove the original house. Also, I had to get rid of the grave for the sheep, whatever his name was. Is this messed up? After removing the house, it was time to start making the gate at the front of the castle. I'm pretty sure I finished building up these pillars out of clay, and on the next day, I put some cobblestone on the roof of them. Okay, that looks really bad. I tried to fix the pillar, but it somehow looked even worse, so I just put it back to how it was. After that, I started making the wall. The next day, I did the same thing, until I realized that smelting clay takes forever, so I started building those castle wall type things on the top. Next, I decided to make a side building out of snow. I have no idea why I did this, I don't have much snow left. I also started building this tower, except instead of being white, I'm making it out of wood, because wood is easy to get. I ran out of wood. At least wood is easy to get because on day 69, I just mined wood all day. I also didn't make a day 69 joke because I'm not immature and childish. Day 70, I was mining stone and that's basically what I did for the next two days mixed with some more wood mining. It's also kind of funny because I thought this would be my last time mining materials. Day 72, I built up some oak log pillars on the side of the tower and then I built the tower up. This continued into day 63 where I also started placing some slabs on the side for detail. But while I was doing that, tragedy struck. I tried to build a little room on the top of the tower, but then I realized I hit the height limit. Yeah, apparently the height limit in Minecraft Alpha is only 128 blocks. So, for the rest of the day, I mined everything down, and then I did everything I just did and built a room in the middle with another ugly cobblestone roof on the top. On day 74, the tower was finished. I decided to work on another side building, and at this point, it's been almost 20 days, and I haven't even started the main castle yet. I don't understand how I keep missing every M. LG. I took a quick break to cook some food, and by the end of the day, I was finished building the side building. So, on day 75, it was finally time to start building the main building. I built some stairs for the entrance, and then I started building up the front wall. This is what I had near the end of the day. It's kind of dark. On day 76, I put a roof on the castle, and then I started working on a little building on the side. This is the last building, I swear. This building was basically the same as the other ones, and after finishing it, I decided to add a tower coming from the middle of the building. I'm using stone this time. Time, I'm never mining another piece of clay again. I spent the rest of the day building the tower and things were starting to look good. So the next day I placed some walls on the other sides and then I made the roof of the castle a little bit longer. I don't really remember why. On day 78 I ran out of wood. Honestly I'm surprised it even lasted this long. And while chopping trees I got to take a look at the castle from afar. Yeah that will probably look good when it's finished. This was also the day that I decided to turn the Minecraft music on. I don't think I've ever once listened to the music in Minecraft. I would usually just get my ears blasted after opening my game and then I would disable it. But something about this Minecraft music just hits different when you were playing the oldest version. On day 79, I built a stone tower on the other side of the main building. By now, you've probably seen too many walls. I've done a lot of placing walls. So just know that I was pretty much finished the exterior at the end of the day, so I did a quick castle check again. Pretty much the same as before. On day 80, I finished building the right side tower and I actually completely finished the exterior. It looks kind of dumb because of the clouds, but this shot is too good not to put in the video. The next day I started filling the floors with wood and I started with the second floor which was easy because I left space for a little balcony thing to look over the first floor. There are going to be four floors in total and I finished both the second and third floor pretty quickly so I moved on to the first floor which was kind of funny because there is a giant cave underneath the floor that got created when I terraformed the mountain. On day 82 I was still filling in the first floor because it was a full floor and then unfortunately I ran out of wood again. 
I remember saying on like day 70 that this would be my last time getting materials, which just wasn't true at all. But somehow I'm not really bothered by this. Everything is just so slow in Minecraft Alpha, but for some reason I've enjoyed playing this version so much more than any modern version of Minecraft. I mean, I've been working on a single build for almost 30 Minecraft days, which is like 10 hours in real time, and I'm not even finished. Yet it's the most fun I've had playing survival in probably like ever. On day 83, I was back to filling in the floor. I finished filling in the final floor, which was extra annoying because there were clouds flying through my face every two seconds. The next day, I finished flooring the other rooms that weren't in the main building of the castle, and then I added some windows on one of the side buildings to give it some extra detail. The problem with these windows is that they don't have windows in them, though. So to keep the medieval theme, I want to use fences as windows. I was totally wrong about using fences as windows. For some reason, they don't connect to the blocks. So instead, I just added some railings on the inside of the building, and then I decided to just use glass to make the windows. The only problem was I only had 10 glass and 38 sand, so it was sand mining time. On day 85, I added some interior to the front towers while waiting for my glass to smelt, and then I placed windows all around the castle. So many windows, you can call me Bill Gates. No one should actually do that. After that, I finished the interior from the beginning of the day, and I also might have accidentally killed a pig. Technically, I didn't touch him. This one isn't on me. I needed snow for one of the first buildings I made, so on day 86, I went looking for some snow. There's something about this version that just reminds me of the first time I played Minecraft. In one of my earliest memories of playing Minecraft, I had like this creative world which I built a giant castle in. Well, it probably wasn't giant, I was like 9 or 10 years old, but I would work on this build every day, and one day I remember I somehow died in my creative world. Don't even ask how that is possible. And I completely lost my builds because I didn't know what the cords were. So I just cried for hours and hours over losing my Minecraft world. I was loving the craft so much that I cried over Minecraft. On day 87, I filled in the snow on the wall, and then I used the extra snow to fill in the parts on top of the castle that I never filled in. After that, I worked on finishing the brick wall, which is funny because it was the first thing I built on the castle, and it's the last thing that got finished. I also added a gravel path going towards the entrance, and then I threw in some fences for extra detail. I made a fountain in the middle of the courtyard, I think is what they call it, and it took me forever to make this water flow properly because I'm stupid. I added some glowstone on top of these fences, but I ran out, so instead I put torches like this on the other ones to light up the area. On day 89, I put a farm and some flowers in front of the castle, and then for the final part of the build, I started building a mixed cobblestone and mossy cobblestone wall on the side. I've officially finished the castle. It took me 35 days to build this. I want to say it doesn't even look that bad, considering the limitations of building in Minecraft Alpha. It definitely looks better than the modern house, no offense. I just said no offense to myself. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this thing turned out. It's definitely better than anything I could have built when I was 10 years old. We should also probably get rid of this pillar in the top right, but it's been there since day one, so at this point I'm just going to leave it. Now obviously I built this castle with a purpose, and that was to put all the blocks I collected earlier on Display. So, I placed a bunch of lame blocks on the first floor, and then I put some slightly better ones on the second floor, and then some decent blocks got put on the third floor, and finally I placed the most wicked blocks on the top floor. Obsidian, mossy cobblestone, iron block, gold block, and diamond block. And that's it. That's every block in Minecraft Alpha in a museum. Now you might have thought we've done it all because I built a castle, but you might remember that I still have one objective left. I still need to find the golden apple. Now this castle took forever to build, and I'ma be honest, I don't think we have enough time to find a golden apple, but we have to try. I ended up traveling thousands of blocks and went through a bunch of spawners trying, but honestly I kind of hoped I didn't find the golden apple. Because for one, this would just seem scripted if I find it on day 99, but also finding a golden apple doesn't actually mean anything to me. I mean, after all, this is Minecraft Alpha. There is no objective in the game. No Ender Dragon, no achievements. Other than a slight outline of what you're supposed to do, you really can do anything. And maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. So, on day 99, I didn't find a spawner. But I did return to my base. And on day 100, I did the corniest thing you can do at the end of a 100 days video. I watched the sun rise one final time, completely naked. Well, Steve has clothes on by default, but you get what I mean. And at the end of the day, I decided to visit my old Minecraft world from when I was 10. Okay, I don't think this is the same one, but it's the replacement world for the one that I lost. And as you can see, there was a castle. It was much better than the one I built today, obviously. I mean, look at this genius architecture. I spent the rest of the day looking around at all the amazing things I built, and I even found a sign hidden in all this mess. Burger King. This is supposed to be Burger King. Yeah, that says a lot.
So a while ago, I... Wait, no, no, no. A literal year ago, I played Minecraft Alpha. And I guess I forgot to make a part two. So today we are back playing Minecraft Beta. And if you haven't watched the first video already, basically what I'm gonna be doing is updating my game every five days until we reach the last version of Minecraft Beta. And in the first video, we did a lot of different things, like building this giant castle. We collected every block, and then I stored them all inside of the castle. So what I'm gonna be doing in this video is very similar. We're going to go out and find all the new blocks and items that were added in Minecraft Beta 1.2. Minecraft Beta 1.2 added a couple things, such as the cake, the dispenser, lapis, lapis blocks obviously, because they're made from lapis, note blocks, sandstone, spruce wood, birch wood, and dyed wool, except for brown. For some reason you can't get brown wool yet. The items it added were bones, bone meal, ink sacks, charcoal, dyes, and sugar. And there's also now colored sheep and squids, which you can do something pretty cool with that I'll show you later in the video. A couple random things is hovering items shows their name now apparently that was added and eggs can be thrown but i don't even remember there being eggs in minecraft alpha so we're gonna have to go find some eggs as well so i'm gonna start off with the things that i can craft right now and then we'll go look for some of the other blocks i honestly left the last video pretty poor i basically used all my diamond stuff to build this castle i remember i made like six pickaxes and like 20 shovels at least so i'm not really sure what we can make right now i have some sand so i guess we can make sandstone i think it's just like this Oh my god, I forgot you can't drag stuff in the crafting table. You have to click one by one. Okay, so we got our sandstone. That's one block down. And I guess we'll just put it with the sand for now. We can also make a dispenser probably, but I don't even know how you make a dispenser to begin with. I'm definitely not looking up the recipe. Okay, so we need a bow and redstone. I'm not sure if we even have any redstone. I'm not gonna lie. We can make a bow though. Okay, we actually have a lot more stuff than I remember. We still have 24 diamonds left and we have the rest of our tools. Okay, we do have redstone. So let's make our bow. And let's put our redstone like this. And yeah, that's how you make a dispenser. Okay, we'll just put this with the sandstone for now. We can also make a note block. Or wait, this is how you make a jukebox. I really don't know how to craft anything in this game. Okay, so a note block doesn't require a diamond. It's just a redstone. Using a lot of redstone right now. Okay, so we make a chest and we put redstone. And now we have a note block. And now I think the last thing we can make, other than the dyed wool, but we'll do the dyed wool all at once later, is a cake. Which once again, I have no idea how to craft a cake. But I'm going to guess, I think it actually needs needs a bucket of milk. Okay, we do have an egg. Eggs were real. I think you need an egg, wheat, sugar, and a bucket of milk. Not sure what order you put them in the crafting. Okay, so you actually need three buckets of milk. I do not have that right now, so we're gonna have to go find a cow. Let's also hope I have some iron. I'm not seeing any iron in these chests. All right, let's go look for some cows. Also turning dark outside. I kind of forgot you can't sleep during the night in this version. That's kind of annoying. Okay, where are the cows? We got some pigs right here. I'm actually gonna kill this guy really quickly. I'd rather eat the raw food if I don't have to heal. Okay, there's cow. There's a cow over here. Okay, that's one. Okay, that's two. And that's three. I guess the cow has infinite milk. All right, let's go back to this other house we have and we'll craft a cake. And then after that, we can go look for some of the other stuff. All right, there's already mobs spawning everywhere. All right, here's our crafting table. And we put three wheat on the bottom like this, an egg in the middle, and I only got one sugar. Okay, we have to go get sugar cane. It's already died sheep spawning. I guess we can cross that one off the list. Pretty sure the only sugar cane I have is all the way over here. I really don't want these creepers blowing anything up, so we're going the long way. All right, now there's like 30 cows. Before, there was only one. Okay, and all the sugarcane is down here. I don't think I ever used this farm in the video as well. I think this is literally the first time. I might as well harvest the whole thing. And now we'll make our sugar. And we can put the wheat on the bottom like this. Egg in the middle. Sugar like this. And three milks on the top. And yeah, that makes a cake. It took about five minutes to make a single cake, but we did it. All right, let's put it with the other stuff. Now we have to look for the new spawning blocks, which means we're gonna have to travel pretty far away from this home because I explored a lot of the chunks around here. I remember there was one way that I haven't gone yet, but the problem is I don't remember which way that was. I'm pretty sure it was this way through the ocean, which makes sense. I don't know why I would want to go through this giant ocean, so I guess we're going to travel that way. Spiders in this version are so annoying. Alright, let's get a little bit of wood, and we'll make a boat, and we're just gonna hit the water. The one good thing about being in the water at night is at least the mobs can't spawn here, but it's really annoying considering I literally can't see anything in front of me right now. It's probably a little bit better on the video because I'm gonna enhance the brightness, but I literally can't see anything. Hey, okay, we're not going over there. We got three spiders on the island. I'm assuming I didn't go this way yet, but I also might have. I just don't really remember at this point. Regardless, we're gonna have to travel a pretty long distance to find these new blocks anyway. Okay, what is going on over here? Oh, 
there's a few too many mobs on that island. This boat is the slowest thing ever. Why is it not turning? Maybe we'll just stay in the water for now. It looks like it's beginning to turn daytime. Yeah, traveling at night in this version is kind of horrible. I'm not sure if you guys saw it on the original 100 days, but you can't see anything and there's mobs everywhere. So you basically just have to hold W and walk past all the mobs. Okay, yeah, I've definitely been here before because this terrain generation looks kind of old. Oh, there's some squids down there. I don't know if you can see them. I guess I can show you what I was going to show you with the squids. So you see these squids here? Remember how we needed milk earlier for the cake? Okay, apparently you can't milk the squids. I was pretty sure you could milk squids. I guess you can't. Yeah, I guess I lied. I don't know. Well, basically what was supposed to happen was just like a cow. I was able to milk the squids. Apparently they added that for some reason, but it doesn't look like it works in this version. Maybe it's like one version after this or one before. I don't know. Either way, we actually need to kill some squids because we need their ink sacks for the wool. Yeah, okay. We got eight ink sacks. That's pretty good. Okay, I see like a desert over there. I don't know if that's a new desert or an old desert. I'm probably gonna go that way though. Okay, why is the skeleton holding a bow like that? And why does the fire look like that? Yeah, I don't remember that happening before. That's looking a little weird. Oh yeah, he drops bones. We actually did need bones. So that's good. What we're looking for right now is a taiga or a birch forest. Yeah, I'm actually not sure if birch forests even exist, thinking about it. We're looking for a birch tree, at least. And yeah, I guess the best way to go would be over here. I'm not really sure. We also kind of have to remember where our base is, so I can't really go that far away. I always forget you have to break the boat. You can't just like leave it. Okay, we got a cactus. It's another type of dye, but I'm pretty sure we have to smelt it. And here's another dye, yellow dye. Okay, there's some snow up there, so that's different. Yeah, pretty much all I can see right now is just oak trees though. But I'm pretty sure I haven't been here yet. I would probably see some torches or some blocks. So we're definitely going the right way. Okay, let's get this rose. And that's another dye. And then we can combine these two and make orange. But I probably shouldn't be doing that as I have like no room in my inventory. Okay. Yeah, I'm not really seeing any new trees anywhere. Just a bunch of oak trees everywhere. We still need to cave for some lapis as well, so I was hoping to find these trees quickly. Because once we find these trees, we know we can find lapis in the caves, because we'll know it's new terrain. But right now, I don't even know if this is new terrain. It probably is, but I don't really know. I don't really remember seeing any ice in the original video. I'm pretty sure ice was in the game by then, I just don't remember seeing any. Okay, I hear a zombie here. There could be a spawner. If you don't remember, I was looking for a golden apple, which can only be found in spawners and i didn't end up finding it so we are still looking for that okay i don't think i'm finding this we have to move while we still have daylight because we need to find these trees if we don't find these trees while there's daylight well we're still going to keep looking it's going to be dark which isn't fun we shouldn't have to travel that much further okay there's just random sugarcane on the land and just a bunch more oak trees it looks like okay i swear i don't remember going this way so there's got to be some new trees oh this looks like a spawner it doesn't look like i've been to this spawner yet does yeah dirt over the chest I don't know, that loot isn't really promising. Is that really the only chest? Okay, like, that was the only chest, and it just had, like, nothing in it. But there's dirt over top of the chest, so I'm, like, 90% sure I haven't been here yet. Also, the color of the grass and the leaves looks right, which it didn't over there. So I'm not sure if that's just this version, or if that had something to do with me being there, and now this is new. Either way, it's more than likely new if I hadn't checked that spawner. Either that, or I just missed the spawner. Okay, yeah, there's a crafting table here. So it turns out we've actually been here. And what I was just saying, is there's actually coordinates in this version so I can go wherever I want. I kind of forgot about that. I thought it was like the first versions I was playing where there was no cords. Okay, yeah, we're just gonna get rid of one of these buckets. Okay, so we're gonna go more this way because if I put a crafting table there, I probably boated that way. So we're gonna go more this way then. That sucks that I've actually explored all these chunks. I know there was one way from my house that I hadn't gone yet and I guess this was the wrong way. It's crazy the things that become difficult on this version. It's taken me like 15 minutes to look for birch and spruce wood. And speaking of the birch, wood i actually see some right here i saw it before that but i was just saying that so yeah it looks like we haven't been here yet and yeah that looks like a real desert as well unlike the stuff we were seeing before so now we just need spruce wood after we get this yeah i see a ton of birch trees that's really good okay let's just harvest a few of these and you can't make shears yet which sucks because we can't get birch leaves yet we're gonna need to get those in the future when they add shears okay and it's also turning dark again it literally took us a full day to get birch trees that really shows just how different old minecraft is because by now in modern Minecraft, I could have technically beat the game. I mean, me personally, I probably wouldn't have, but somebody could have beat the game. I'm sure somebody could have beat the game in beta too, except you can't beat the game yet. That gets added later. But yeah, if it's gonna be dark out right now, we might as well go look for the lapis 
and then we'll go back up for spruce wood after. It doesn't seem like an optimal thing to do, but if it's dark on the surface, it's also dark in the caves, so it just makes sense. Okay, we have to find a cave first without dying. See, there's too many mobs. This is what I was talking about. Like, how is there this many mobs? It doesn't even make sense. There's like 30 skeletons, 20 spiders. It's getting hit by a zombie, and there's creepers right there. I don't even remember it being this bad. Okay, we found a cave. Okay, finding lapis shouldn't be that hard. Okay, we, we kind of have to not die, though. Yeah, we, we have to not. Like, I shouldn't be doing that. And this isn't really a cave, so I guess we're digging down. We have like 10 minutes to find this. Hopefully, we can find it. I can actually see my Y level now, which is helpful. And yeah, we found a cave. Okay, that's good. Some gold. We don't need gold, though. We just need lapis. In a version where lapis is almost completely useless, that is what we need. I don't know why I'm mining coal. It's not helpful. Actually, it is, because we have to make torches soon. Okay, yeah, there's like literally no mobs in the cave. It seems all the mobs spawn on the surface at night, and then there's just nothing in the caves. All right, never mind. There's one zombie, actually. Okay, I didn't know lapis was the new diamonds. Okay, come on. There's got to be lapis somewhere. If we can't find some lapis, then we're actually in trouble. I also might just be in loaded chunks again. There's no shortage of caves, though. It just seems we're missing the dark blue diamonds, unfortunately. Actually, I'm actually going to find some real diamonds before we find lapis. It also doesn't help the caves are pitch black, so it's difficult to see where I'm going. Okay, I'm just going to stop trying to MLG. All right, never mind. We actually just found lapis. I was about to complain again, and we found it. And you get a single lapis for mining a lapis ore. Okay, so we're going to need a few more of those, because we need to make the block, and then we need to dye the wool, and we probably need some to mix to make other dyes. So yeah, we're going to need like at least 15. Luckily, there's lapis right here, right? No, there's not. Okay. I'm pretty sure the lapis just spawns lower down in this version. So yeah, we just have to stay low to get more. At least we didn't find diamonds before. Caving in this is so weird. It's like, okay, there's more lapis here. I hear a lot of zombies. There's just a lot of mobs in general. I was thinking there might be a spawner there, but it's probably not. Okay, we have six lapis. I was saying the caves in this version are kind of weird though, because like, they don't feel like they ever end, but it's really difficult to find out where they continue. Like, it's super dark everywhere, and the places the caves continue are usually like one block holes, so it's really weird. Okay, I gotta stop taking damage. Every time I take fall damage, it breaks my armor, which is kind of weird, because that's not how new Minecraft works at all. It should be daytime on the surface pretty soon, and that kind of sucks, because we're not even halfway through finding our lapis, so we're probably gonna miss it. I honestly didn't think finding these items would take this long. Well, actually, it's only been 40 minutes so far. I actually expected it to take like an hour, but I feel like it's gonna take longer. Okay, yeah, we're kind of running into like part of the cave where I just don't know where to go anymore. Oh, we found more lapis. See, this is the problem. The caves are so dark, I almost didn't see that. And it's just a one vein of lapis anyway. I actually wish I didn't see it. We gotta go to where the zombies were. We can find it. I can hear it, but just not really find it. Or we can go over here. This place is dark. It's just dark because I haven't put a torch. It's We've been here. This is where I found the first lapis. Okay, I hear like a lot of mobs. So either the caves are just really weird with spawning them or it is daytime. Okay. I almost died to that creeper because I can't really see anything. If I didn't hit it, I would have died. There's like 400 mobs in this one spot. It's better be where the lapis is. And we're out of torches again. Oh, what are you guys doing? Okay, yeah, just fight each other. Yeah, who's gonna win? Oh, there, you fell in a hole. Okay, yeah, just stop the fight. Yeah, look at me again. Yeah, you're, you're gone. Yeah, let's eat this. Okay, just need like eight more lapis. Apparently that's difficult. Okay, we got more. Like, come on. Okay, yeah, there's just every mob down here. Wait. I was thinking I could have got a music disc from that. I'm actually not sure if I have any music discs. I probably do, but I don't really remember getting a music disc. I know there's a jukebox in the game because we crafted it on like day 10. There's got to be music discs, right? And if there is, I probably have one, but I actually might not. Lapis could not be harder to get. And I am serious about that. Like it actually could not be harder to get. It's super rare right now, and you only get one per ore. It actually couldn't be harder to get. Okay, we found some diamonds. We found diamonds before we finished our lapis and there's like 13 zombies protecting this okay why do zombies even drop feathers i don't really understand why they even dropped them i'm not sure if they still do it's like a rare drop or something or they just don't i actually don't know three creepers really just trying to find some lapis if i had known lapis was this rare i would have kept looking for the spruce wood i can't lie this is actually like not funny anymore like where is the lapis okay i guess we're strip mining and looking for a new cave but yeah at this point i'm not sure if there's lapis in that cave at all i'm also running kind of low on coal which means i'm gonna run out of torches soon Hopefully we can just find this quickly. Okay, there's some kind of cave here. 
Hey, there's more diamonds here. Just another one vein. And that's it. I never thought I'd be disappointed to find diamonds, but now is the time, I guess. Okay, there's more cave here. We've just been here already. And yeah, maybe there's some lapis I missed. These creepers, man. Okay, like the creepers in this version are actually unironically scary. It's like, I almost died again. Like, there was no way of knowing that creeper was behind me. Oh, there's more lapis that we actually missed. Okay, this is good. Now we have nine. It's just a really disappointing number. I can't lie. I'm still not even sure what Y level it can spawn at. I think it should be able to spawn up here. Why is there so many mobs in the corner? Okay, like, we just need six more lapis. I think it's just too rare. I mean, at least we can make a lapis block. But I did want to get all the wool as well. I mean, I'm not giving up, though. Back to the strip mines. We have about five minutes until it should be daytime. So, yeah, it would perfectly work out if I found six lapis, like, right now. And we just find more diamonds. But, once again, it's a one vein. Just not having luck on either side right now. No strip mining like this reminds me of the original 100 days but like not in a good way not in a good way at all i was strip mining for like at least 20 days and 20 days because there was no beds that's gotta be like almost seven hours i was strip mining for like seven hours and i remember it took till like day 15 to even find any diamonds oh it looks like we have a spawner actually that's really good there can probably be lapis and spawner chests okay yeah that's pretty much useless I got some bread though but yeah that was a pretty useless spawner chest Just really hoping for some lapis which is a weird thing to say the problem with caving for this long is i can also end up back in the old chunks because i didn't go that far okay i'm hearing more stuff this way this does look like a new cave the guy's just going for like a water slide or something oh there's another one down there is there any lapis even down here i'm just not bothering with that somehow a zombie died here okay, there's more diamonds yeah we've also got two creepers a spider has got everything blowing up how is it blowing up? That is enough creepers. Yeah, there's another one back there. I, we, we found five diamonds so far and nine lapis. How many mobs can there be? We gotta have some lapis in here, right? Nope. More diamonds. Okay, I'm actually starting to think that I'm caving in the old chunks because there's no way I've found as many diamonds as I've found lapis. That just can't be right. Literally accidentally found more diamonds. Okay. Yeah, I've found more diamonds than lapis. At this point, I'm just gonna assume that this cave is in my old chunks because there is no way that this is possible. So I'm going to dig up and we're gonna go look for a new cave and look for some spruce wood because this whole caving thing is getting very boring. Okay, it's not nighttime. We're also not in old chunks because there's birch trees right here. So I'm not sure what is up with the lapis rates in these caves. So I guess let's just look for some spruce wood and then I'll decide if I want to go find some more lapis or not. Okay, I've placed blocks here. Yeah, so I feel like I'm going in and out of old chunks. So there's a lot of birch trees here, but I also am finding blocks. So I don't really know. Yeah, not really any birch trees over here so we shouldn't go this way like look at the view from up here it's not very good got a giant cloud in the way it also just isn't good in general i don't know what i was cooking up there okay yeah i don't see any birch trees in this direction either but i am going further away from my base right now i feel like there's no way i've been out here yet it also might be possible that there can just be a forest with no birch trees i don't really think about that like that is a real thing i'm not sure if this version is that advanced yet to look at those mountains over there this version has such nice terrain sometimes like a lot of the terrain just looks pretty bad but then there's just mountains like that like yeah we got mountains like this this looks pretty bad then the mountains that were over there which we can't see anymore those are good all right what just happened to my boat it's not at all what i expected right, let's just hope we can stay in the water for most of this because i'm kind of tired of the mobs after caving i'm thinking if i get to like x of 3000 there's really no way i've been there yet at this point i don't even know the right direction back like if i didn't have f3 i'd just be lost so there's no way i traveled that far because this was in the early days when i went this way if i went this way i see snow which is really good if we're looking for spruce wood yeah i think those are spruce trees you can probably see them better than I can, but we're about to find out if they're spruce trees. I'm 90% sure they're spruce trees, which is very good. That means we can just go back and look for the lapis again, and then we can hopefully be done with exploring. I really just want to go back at this point. I've seen everything. I've seen it all again. It's been a year since I played this world, and now I kind of remember why I stopped. It's looking heavily guarded. Yeah, there's a lot of guards out here. Okay, this is 
Can you stop? Like, it's just a few mobs down there. We're just gonna... Okay, we only have eight torches. I'm I'm about a bridge. I'm bridging in beta. I don't think anyone's ever speed bridged in beta before, to be fair. Actually, beta, they definitely have. So a lot of people actually play this version. Okay, let's just get the wood from up here. Yeah, three logs is looking like enough. Okay, yeah, six logs might actually be enough. There's like a million trees over there. The problem is we have a whole horde of mobs under us. Do not want me to live. It also looks like we have some kind of spawner maybe over here. Okay, we have to kill all these mobs first. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Okay, the creepers aren't blowing up. I was thinking one of the creepers could blow up. The spiders are the most annoying because they can actually catch you. Okay, I'm just gonna make a run for it. Let's find our way to this cave thing and hopefully we can get a few more lapis. It's just a water cave. Okay, that is fine because I'm 100% sure we're in new terrain so I'm digging down. I should probably mine some of this coal because I'm actually almost out of torches. Okay, so let's dig down. Hopefully we find something at least like two more lapis. Just turning around to see if Harrowbrine's in my strip mine. All right, I've so had enough of this caving. We're gonna go with the nine lapis we have, and we're gonna make all the wool, and we'll try to get a lapis block in the next video, but I have just, I'm tired of caving. I've been caving for a long time, and I really don't want to start again, so we're just gonna get a bit more spruce wood on the surface, and we're gonna head back. That seems like a good idea at this point. I know that I said I was gonna do it, but like, come on. I spent like almost an hour to get nine lapis, so let's just get a bit more spruce wood for now not really sure if I'm gonna use it to build anything. I'm also pretty sure there's some type of like chunk unloaders that you can use that'll unload the chunks around my base, which might actually be useful if I'm gonna keep updating like this. Because some of the terrain we were walking in at the start is literally from like the first version of alpha when like the grass is all super green and there's just like three blocks and that's it. God, I'm tired of making boats. I wonder when they actually make it so that you can pick them up because I have to have made like a hundred boats and it makes no sense in this version you can't even like leave the boat without breaking it too and when you break it it just turns into some sticks and some wood it's also funny looking at f3 going back to my base i actually get less fps in minecraft beta than do minecraft actually i'm not sure if that's true it might be similar i know on like 1.8 i get like two times this at least though you think you would get better fps in minecraft beta than anything else but i guess the game just wasn't optimized enough back when it was made i mean a thousand fps still isn't anything to complain about i'm not complaining about the fps FPS. Even more water ahead. Even though the water is faster to travel in, I just hate making the boats, so I'm walking in the land at this point. Ooh, we get to go to the real desert. I'm not sure if deserts were actually around in, like, the first versions that I played. I think they were added pretty soon. But yeah, it's nice to see a different biome than just forest. And there's where I made a boat before. Time to make another boat. But yeah, we still have a way to go. Okay. A chicken just randomly spawned out of thin air. I don't know if anyone saw that. And now there's like five chickens here. Mob spawning in this version is also so weird. Yeah, this isn't that good beta terrain though. I remember one way I went in the first hundred days. A bunch of like giant mountains and it actually looked really cool. Okay, it's just a giant hole in the world. Wait, maybe we can find some lapis with this. Hold on. Do you guys see any lapis? I honestly don't really see any lapis. Yeah, I'm not really gonna walk on this because I don't know how like chunk errors work in this version. Well, that's not really a chunk error. I still am not gonna walk on it though. At this point, if I had to reset my world, I lost all my nine lapis, I'm gonna be mad. That nine lapis took forever. I had to work for that nine lapis. I can't reset this world, so we are not walking on there. Okay, why does the boat do a 180 every time I get in it, too? There's so many things wrong with the boats. I still remember when there was no sounds in this version, or when there was no sounds in the alpha video. That was really interesting. Like, the creepers were, like, ten times worse. Hold up, we got a one-block gap we gotta walk in. Okay, the boat can't go through. I thought that I could get the boat through, but I guess not. I I've used so much wood on boats. But I remember when there was no sound in alpha. Creepers I was finding in the caves now already sneak up on you. You actually couldn't do anything about the creepers back then. Dang dangerous area up ahead for the boat. We're gonna have to go around. Gotta watch out. Can't drive my boat into any blocks. Oh, there's another boat crafting table over there. That's how you can tell where you've been. You see the crafting tables, you know you made a boat. I'm sure there's like diamonds under this. It just looks like there'd be diamonds under there, does it not? I'm not checking. Okay, we got a gray chicken. We should be pretty close. We are pretty close, I can tell by the quartz. But like, yeah, I was just saying stuff. Okay, now it's turning nighttime because I'm being stupid. And here we have some interesting terrain. We got these uh, random chunk errors from new generation. Got a little 
little bit of sand here. Sand with no sandstone. You never see this. Yeah, we got bees. Don't really know what you call them. Coming out of the ground here. And that's how you know we're almost home. Hopefully you can get around this though. Okay, looks like we're building up. Turns out even with F3, I'm actually about to get lost. Please, not the spiders, man. Come on. And the skeletons and the creepers. Just everything. It's like we're going swimming. It's only a few creepers. I'm going for a nice little swim here. Give up. I swim faster. I see a house over there. So that means we're almost home. Unless somebody else built that house. Could be Herobrine's mansion. Now that's definitely the house that I built. Even though it's dark, I can tell. We got the whole like Coast Guard army here. I'm just not allowed to go back home. I'm gonna make like one of those railroad tracks. I'm pretty sure that was a really common thing in this version is like people made like giant railroads. I'm about to make one of those so that I don't have to swim across the water. Or boat. Honestly, boat is just as bad. That's why I just haven't made a boat. Like just, just let me get home. You don't have to guard me from getting in the water like this guy's been chasing me the whole time too this spider has been chasing me the entire time through the water what if we just went through one of the 20 nether portals right now does this not look so sick in the dark i won't lie this build is pretty terrible compared to like modern builds it still looks really cool also for anyone who didn't watch the video i built the entire mountain that it's on basically which took forever in that pillar that pillar's not getting removed i'm not removing the pillar i don't remember why but i'm not removing the pillar oh that's where the mobs are i keep hearing mobs and i'm just i don't know where they are We're back at the base and we have almost everything we needed let's make some things we're making bone meal um making a few furnaces because apparently there's no furnaces in this room i think you smelt this into dye literally i don't think i've ever made green dye before this is black dye and then we make gray dye we can also make light gray dye okay we already have the red we should have got more flowers i didn't realize that we can go get more flowers though i probably have flowers actually okay, we got our green you can put green with this you get lime and then you put lapis with this you get light blue you merge the you merge these two okay it's cyan now i think what we're missing we're just missing purple i think i'm not really sure we could be missing something else and i just don't know we gotta have a couple red flowers right okay i don't think we do okay we have our logs we can't make anything okay we only have logs that's good to know those are complete apparently oak planks are still the only planks in the game we need charcoal that's random but apparently charcoal was added in beta i don't even know if that's true i <laughs> think that doesn't feel like it's true yeah, apparently it is. And yeah, these are different. We have charcoal now. Um, okay, so we need to get some red flowers. And we needed a lapis block. We're not getting a lapis block this video, though. Because that is apparently too difficult. Okay, let's find some red flowers that aren't part of the castle. Okay, we got red flowers down there. I don't think we need that many. I only think there's, like, pink. Is there even another purple? I don't know. Whatever. This will definitely be enough. Yeah, enjoy burning, buddy. This will definitely be enough to make every wool. And then we can maybe try to find a place to put all these blocks in the museum, although I'm not sure if that is possible. I think I built just enough spots for, like, everything. You can actually check. I mean, we could put some stuff here. There's gonna be a spider on the top floor again, probably. Oh, yeah, we can definitely put some stuff in the top floor, too. Like, I reserved it for some of, like, the best blocks. We can definitely, like, put, like, all the wool here. Yeah, we can definitely put some stuff up there and some stuff back on the bottom. We're gonna have to build more of this when more blocks are added, but right now, we're fine. So, let's make a bit more of this. We do this and this. We get this. We do this and this we get nothing. That is really weird. That makes sense. That is not what I expected, but that makes sense. Okay, so we have our wool. We obviously have white already. Okay, one of this, this, one of this. Orange, yellow, purple, pink, lime, green. I threw the- that's not what I meant to do. Light blue, blue, and cyan. Okay, that's all the wool. Now let's grab all the different blocks. We got a cake, note block, dispenser, sandstone, this wood, this wood, and we'll just grab some of this. And let's put these in the museum. Oh, we put them on top of stone. Hopefully we have stone. Don't have stone. Okay, well, we'll smelt some stone. And right now, we'll go put the blocks up. And then we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. That's probably fine. Put this here, this here, this here. Note block, dispenser, and cake. Okay, so we got some random blocks in this hallway now. That's pretty good. And now we'll go up to the top floor and we'll put down our wool. I really gotta find this spider. Okay, we've got a cloud right here. We need 13 blocks. Okay, that works. We can kind of put them, I guess, in a rainbow. Torches here for now, so nothing spawns. Yeah, that looks fine. And let's just go get our stone. Our stone should be done. We'll replace all the wood with stone. Yeah, our stone is definitely done. That actually was pretty fast. Or I was slow. I don't know which one. Hopefully the cake. Yeah, I knew that was gonna happen. I'll, I'll go get another cake after this. Knew that was gonna happen. I still did it. Just on the chance that it wouldn't. Yeah, let's just break all of these. And then we'll just put stone under it. And now we have to go get a different cake. What do we need for a cake again? 
in. We need an egg. That is actually a problem. Oh no, we have another egg. That is not an issue. Apparently, I have two eggs. We do have to go get that milk again, and I threw those buckets out. No, I have enough buckets. Okay, I don't even feel like leaving my house. I see a cow here. I, I'm, I'm coming back for this guy. I keep hearing this guy over and over again. Now, you know what? Now, let's just put our house back. We made it like this. Yeah, okay. And now we can just throw down our cake. Okay, now we are done. Well, except for the lapis, but we will get the lapis block another time. But yeah, I guess that concludes episode one of Minecraft beta. This is a completely different format of video than I'm used to making, so let me know what can be improved, or if you just hate the video, or if you like it.